Previously on the Amagi, a rubber man decides he wants to be king of the pirates, so he assembles a ragtag crew and starts adventuring. After a lot of huge fights and insane hijinks, he gets punched so hard by a bear that he has to wait two years before seeing his friends again. Welcome to the Amagi! Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on our social media. Let's reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. YouTube's been unsubscribing users from channels lately, so if you're a fan of us, please do us a favor and double check to see if you're still subscribed. It only takes a second and it helps us a ton here at Amagi. And with that out of the way, Let's get into the video. New World Saga During the time skip At some point in the time skip, Luffy developed Gear 4 in order to help him subdue the beasts on Rusukaina. He later asked Rayleigh how to improve his attack power with it, and Rayleigh warned him about the consequences of using it. However, Luffy later learned how to properly utilize Gear 4. While teaching Kenbun Shoku Haki to Luffy, Rayleigh challenged Luffy to dodge 100 times while blindfolded or he would not be allowed to eat. When Luffy was attacking blindly, he accidentally hit Rayleigh's dinner, causing him to hit Luffy. While lying on the ground hungry, some animals gave him food, but Luffy refused to eat what they offered. During a later conversation, Rayleigh remarked on how Luffy was proficient in sensing the feelings of living things. He also mentioned that there are people who can see a glimpse into the future and asked Luffy what he would do if he met one of those people. After teaching Luffy the basics of hockey, Rayleigh informed him that hockey grows stronger when one faces a stronger opponent. Return to Sabadi Arc after two years of training, Luffy is greeted by Hancock, Marigold, Sandersonia, Marguerite, and Lylon, who are prepared to take him back to the Sabadi Archipelago. Luffy turns to a group of extremely large animals and tells them to back off from his friends. Sandersonia remarks that Luffy has become the boss of the entire island. Luffy complains that he cannot eat those animals now that they're his friends, but Hancock promises him that food is awaiting him aboard the ship that he's going to use. Luffy then reveals that Rayleigh had left him six months earlier than planned, as Luffy had learned all that Rayleigh could teach him about hockey. When Hancock brought up the idea of becoming Luffy's wife, Luffy bluntly refuses before thanking her. Luffy then put his straw hat back on, a symbol of the pirate straw hat Luffy returning from his vacation. The group then sets off towards the Sabadi Archipelago. After reaching Reaching somewhere close to it, Hancock gives Luffy the cloak she wore to impel down, a fake mustache, and a large bag full of supplies. Luffy then leaves the Kuja ship on a small boat. While searching for his crew, Luffy accidentally knocks over the imposter version of himself. The imposter demands for Luffy to stop and threatens him to beg for forgiveness. Luffy just apologizes again and keeps on walking. This causes the fake to fire at Luffy, who quickly dodged the bullet. He then knocked out all the imposters using Haushoku Haki and keeps on walking. Following the direction, the Viver card is going. Luffy decides to put on the fake mustache that Hancock gave him. He soon meets fake Zoro and fake Sanji, who he believed to be the real ones, and so followed them back to fake Luffy. As Luffy follows the fake members, he's led to fake Luffy on Grove 46 and brought up to a podium where the fake crew is at. While the fake Luffy is about to announce his revenge on Luffy, the Marines, followed by pacifistas and Sentamaru, attack. While the recruits of the fake Straw Hats are beaten, the real Luffy is revealed to everyone present after Sentamaru takes out the imposter, who turned out to be a pirate called Three-Tongued Demolo Black, who was worth a mere 26 million million and orders one of the pacifistas to locate him. Luffy dodges a laser attack from a pacifista with Kenbun Shoku, and takes out the pacifista in one single Busoshoku imbued jet pistol. This indicates to all the spectators, to their surprise, that he is indeed the real Luffy. Zoro and Sanji greet him after the two take out a pacifista together. As Luffy begins to escape from the marines with the real Zoro and Sanji, he sees Rayleigh, and thanks him for everything before saying farewell to him by proclaiming, I'm going to be Pirate King once more, and sets off to Grove 42. As the monster trio head back to the Thousand Sunny, they found marines blocking their way, only for Perona to come and fend off the marines with her negative hollow. She then informed the trio that the marines were coming by the sea. They were then picked up by Chopper and a giant bird, who quickly took them to the ship. Luffy had a chance to briefly admire Frankie's new body before they were attacked. Hancock and the Kuja pirates came to Luffy's aid by intercepting the attacking marine ship. When Luffy revealed that he knew her, he gained the envy of Sanji while Nami and Usopp were surprised that Luffy was sent to Amazon Lily. They then started making preparations to leave, with Nami explaining how a coded ship works. Luffy said to his crew that he had a lot to talk about and thanked them for following his two-year plan. Luffy then states that it's time to set sail for Fishman Island. With the marines held back by the Straw Hat's new allies, the crew submerged and head for Fishman Island. Fishman Island Arc 
As the sunny submerges, Luffy gets excited and marvels at the scenery around them. He and Zoro then try to catch some fish, but are beaten down by Usopp and Chopper. When Sanji suddenly flies out of the bubble due to his nosebleed because of his weakness towards women, Luffy grabs him and pulls him back in. After Nami further explains about the coding, Luffy and Zoro once again try to catch some fish, but again are beaten down by Usopp and Chopper. Seeing that Sanji is out of commission, Luffy then decides to share the bentos he got from Hancock with the rest of the crew. Frankie then reveals to the crew that the one who ensured the safety of the Sunny, along with Hachi and Duval, during the last year was Bartholomew Kuma. He states that he found him sitting in front of the Sunny, and later Rayleigh told him that Kuma had made a deal with Vegapunk to input a mission to protect the ship until a Straw Hat returns. As the crew wonders about Kuma's true intentions, Caribou and his crew are following behind them from a distance, trying to catch up. With their sea cow, the Caribou pirates eventually catch up to the Straw Hats and prepare for battle. Caribou quickly sets foot on the Thousand Sunny. However, before his crew can follow, the sea cow, which turns out to be Mumu, fled in fear after seeing Nami, Luffy, and Sanji, taking the rest of the Caribou pirates and leaving Caribou alone. The Straw Hats then tie up Caribou. When the crew travel through the deep currents and encounter a sea monster known as the Kraken, Luffy decides to tame it and have it pull their ship, much to the others' dismay. Luffy then realizes that they are underwater, which is a problem for him. Caribou then introduces Flutter Kick coating to the crew. Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji then use it and fight the Kraken out in the sea. Luffy scolds Zoro for cutting some of the Kraken's tentacles before knocking it out with his Gomu Gomu no Elephant Gun. The monster trio defeat the Kraken, but because they're not all wearing lifelines, they get separated from the ship and it goes down the underwater waterfall. Later, Luffy successfully tamed the Kraken and named him Surume. Unfortunately, Luffy and Sanji's bubbles had broken, so they had to share Zoro's coating. After some searching, the monster trio eventually found the Thousand Sunny and the rest of the Straw Hats, just in time for Tsutome to save them from an Umibozu. After reuniting with the ship, Luffy was then startled as he heard the undersea volcano starting to erupt. The Straw Hats managed to escape the eruption thanks to Tsutome and Usopp's pop greens. Soon, the crew sees Fishman Island. Luffy then begins to wonder what kind of food is there. Then a gang of sea monsters led by Hammond appear. Hammond gives the crew two options, join the new Fishman Pirates or die. As the Straw Hats prepare to run using a coup to burst, Luffy gives Hammond a rejection. Hammond does not take kindly to Luffy's rejection and prepares to attack the Thousand Sunny. Frankie activates Kuda Burst and the ship flies through the bubble surrounding Fishman Island. After they pass through the bubble, they fell into a current and the crew is separated. Luffy then wakes up in Kami's house where Sanji, Usopp, and Chopper are also there. Kami introduces them to some of her friends, the Madaka Mermaid Quintuplets. She then takes the four pirates to Mermaid Cove where they meet more mermaids. As the crew relaxes in Mermaid Cove, Luffy asks Kami if he can see Jinbei. When Kami informs him that Jinbei is not on the island, Luffy shows his disappointment as he was looking forward to meeting him. Soon, the Madaka Mermaid Quintuplets inform Kami and the group that a royal gondola is approaching. Luffy, Usopp, and Chopper then hide behind cover while Sanji's being covered by a mermaid. The three brothers of the Neptune house appear, searching for the people who entered Fishman Island illegally. The mermaids deny seeing any intruders. As the three brothers are leaving, Sanji gets another massive nosebleed, making him lose more blood than ever before. While Sanji is in critical condition, Luffy, Chopper, and Usopp beg for a blood donation. Hammond and his group then appear and tell the story of how Fisher Tiger supposedly died. After a gruesome battle, Fisher Tiger suffered a critical blood loss and could have been saved with a blood transfusion, but humans refused to help. Hammond goes on to say that because of the humans who left Fisher Tiger to die, there is a law that prevents fishmen and merfolk from sharing blood with humans. Hammond then attempts to capture the four straw hats, firing a net at them, but Luffy is able to dodge the net by sidestepping and knocks out the pirates with a jet pistol. A sea monster tries to attack Luffy, but he subdues it with hockey. Kami takes the gondola and helps the four straw hats escape and takes him to the town port. At the town port, Kami and the four pirates find shelter in Madame Shirely's Mermaid Cafe. Madame Shirely provides them a room where they can treat Sanji. Luffy and the others luckily come across Splash and Splatter, a pair of Okamas who happily agree to donate blood to Sanji. As Sanji is recovering, Luffy recalls that he got scars on his arm after he attacked Hammond and his two companions. Luffy noticed that the octopus mermaid managed to block his attack. Chopper checks Luffy's blood and sees that Luffy was poisoned and is amazed that Luffy's body is able to fight against it. Luffy then remembers an old foe, Magellan. As Sanji is resting with Chopper watching over, Luffy, Usopp, and Kami go to the mermaid cafe and meet Madame Shirely, the owner. Luffy and Usopp marvel at Shirely's crystal ball and learn that Shirely was a fortune teller. 
Luffy asks if mermaids can poop, but gets quickly terrified of Madame Shirely. Kami then takes Luffy and Usopp to the front entrance of the Mermaid Cafe. Luffy shows his great disappointment when he learns that the Mermaid Cafe does not serve meat. The group soon meets Brook and Papagoo, and they have a happy reunion. Papagoo delighted Luffy by offering him sea monster meat, and Luffy is glad that there is meat on Fishman Island. The group then travel by riding on a fish taxi, and Luffy sees a variety of fishmen and merfolk. They soon come across a candy factory with Big Mom's Jolly Roger on it. After learning that Big Mom is the new protector of Fishman Island, Luffy comments that she must be a nice person, and one wonders if he'll meet her someday. After passing the factory, they arrive at Papagoo's house. Luffy and the group soon learn that there is a criminal clothing store on the first floor. As soon as they enter the store, they find Nami making complaints for the high prices. Papagoo says that these straw hats can have whatever they want for free. After hearing this joyful news, they empty the store, much to Papagoo's dismay. They then hear a commotion outside the store, and they find that King Neptune has arrived to meet them. Luffy and the others are then invited by the king himself into the castle. Luffy and his group take a ride on Megalo while Neptune rides on Hoi. On their way to the palace, Luffy spends his time sightseeing. Once they arrive at Ryugu Palace, Luffy marvels at the sight of it. After entering the castle, Luffy wanders away from the group in search of food. Luffy had followed his nose but lost the scent. He saw a door that he thought the smell of the food originated from. The double door in question is huge, made of mostly metal, and has two sets of handles, ring knockers high above, and then regular handles near ground level. Embedded in the doors were three swords and a double-bladed axe. Embedded in the wall around the doorway was an axe, another sword, and the head of a morning star. Luffy, completely ignoring the weapons embedded in the doors and walls, thought the sturdy look of the walls reminded him of Impel Down. He wondered how good food behind that sturdy of a door could be. When he went through the door, it was pitch black, but Luffy saw food on the other side of the room, making him wonder if the room was a banquet hall. He then wondered if he had found the food vault. Luffy then decided he would only take a little bit of the food as his stomach was at its limit. While running across the room, he crashed into something. He thought it was coral that felt really soft. When he first touched the coral, he heard a grunt, but thought it was someone outside. He then began jumping on the coral, comparing its consistency to pudding. He then hears someone ask if someone was in the room. A light suddenly came on and Luffy started to fall. He falls next to a gargantuan giant smelt whiting mermaid, the mermaid princess Shirahoshi. What he thought was coral was actually the coarse material of her top and the softness he felt was actually her breast. She asked him what he was doing on someone else's body and who he was. Luffy was amazed by the size of the princess. She then asked if he was here to take her life too and that she wasn't scared. She tried to hide her fear by saying that she was the daughter of Neptune, but she could not hold back her tears, which were so big that Luffy actually had to dodge the falling water droplets. She then yelled for her father and brothers as Luffy pointed out that he was not doing anything to her. As she continues crying, an axe thrown by Vanderdecken 9 comes flying into her room aiming for the princess. Luffy deflects the axe, saving Shirahoshi's life. When the guards come to Shirahoshi's room, the princess hides Luffy from them. She tells the guards that the noise they heard coming from her room was her having a bad dream. The minister of the right explains the situation with the straw hats. Once the guards leave, Shirahoshi speaks with Luffy. While Luffy is eating, Shirahoshi asks him many questions about the outside world and wonders how Luffy can eat so much while poking him in the cheek. Luffy snaps back and Shirahoshi starts to cry, saying that no one has ever yelled at her before. Luffy points out that Shirahoshi is a big crybaby, causing her to cry even more. Luffy then offers to take a walk with her outside the castle with him being the bodyguard. Luffy asks Shirahoshi about where she wants to go. The princess says that she wants to go to the sea forest. When she starts crying again, Luffy starts to refer to her as a weakling. Knowing that her size will draw attention, Luffy comes up with a plan. As Brooke and the Minister of the Right arrive to her room, Shirahoshi exits the room stuffed inside Megalo while Luffy rides on the top of the shark. Once they leave the palace, Shirahoshi tells Luffy that in the sea forest, there's a grave that she wants to visit. Unbeknownst to Luffy, Jinbei is there waiting for him. While hovering above Coral Hill, Luffy sees Chopper, Sanji, and a bandaged Hachan. Once Luffy jumps down to meet them, he's met with accusations from the Fishman Island citizens for kidnapping mermaids. Megalo has finally reached his limit and spits out Shirahoshi. The Fishman Island citizens instantly conclude that this is a mermaid princess kidnapping. After tying up Luffy, Chopper, Sanji, and Hachan, the citizens discuss what they should do with Luffy and his group. Once they decide that beheading is the best course of action, Vanderdecken 9 flies in on his throne piece of coral, demanding the princess marry him. Shirahoshi refuses, saying that Deccan is not her type. Enraged, Deccan prepares to kill her. The citizens urge her to run, but Luffy tells her to stay where she is because he will not be able to defend her if she gets too far away. Luffy uses Hockey to subdue the fishmen, restraining him and using only his legs to smash the coral and pummel Deccan into the ground. Shirahoshi then unties Luffy, much to the surprise of the citizens. The princess, Luffy, and his friends then hop on Megalo as they attempt to flee the scene. Deccan calls out to Watatsumi to intercept them, but Luffy hits him in the mouth with a jet pistol, shattering one of his teeth. 
The group then continue their path to the sea forest. They soon reach the sea forest and meet Jinbei, Frankie, and Den. Luffy introduces Shirahoshi to Frankie and is overjoyed to see Jinbei again. Frankie then introduces Den to Luffy. After deflecting an axe thrown by Dekken, Luffy watches Shirahoshi pay her respects to her deceased mother. Nami and Kami arrive bearing terrible news about the Ryugu Palace. Jinbei then decides to reveal that he was responsible for allowing Arlong to run wild in the East Blue. Before Jinbei begins his explanation, Luffy displays his forgetfulness by not recalling what Yosaku said about Jinbei back in the East Blue, as well as forgetting the name Fisher Tiger. In the meantime, Luffy listens to Hachan as he explains the Fishman and Merfolk's dark history, and to Jinbei as he explains the ideals of Queen Otohime and Fisher Tiger. Luffy sleeps through the whole thing, only remembering the very beginning when Otohime confronted the robber. After Jinbei finishes his story, Sanji wakes Luffy up by kicking him. A visual Denden Mushi appears and the group watches Hody Jones' speech. After Hody Jones explains his plans of creating the new Ryugu kingdom, he leaves a message for the Straw Hats. After he executes Neptune, he is going to drown Zoro, Usopp, and Brook. He then shows Luffy's wanted poster and says that he will make a fine example out of a 400 million bounty head. Luffy celebrates his bounty increase while Nami scolds him for it. He then decides if Hody wants a fight, he has no other choice than to give it to him. However, Jinbei tells him not to go, as fighting Hody will add to the human fishman prejudice. Luffy, however, tells him that he has to save his crewmates and that if Jinbei wants to stop him, he'll have to fight him. Luffy remains insistent on going to Ryugu Palace. He tries to hop on Megalo, but Jinbei stops him with fishman karate. Luffy counterattacks with a jet stamp and Jinbei blocks it. The two then charge at each other when a clone of Robin suddenly appears between them. Before they collide, the clone vanishes and Luffy and Jinbei hit each other. After the real Robin appears, Jinbei once again tries to reason with Luffy, but the Straw Hat captain remains stubborn. Jinbei comes up with a plan that will make Luffy look a hero instead of a villain. Luffy disagrees at first, but he goes along with the plan when Jinbei agrees to give him all the meat he wants. Luffy goes to Gyoncord Plaza while hiding inside Megalo. He jumps out of Megalo's mouth at the moment when Hody is about to kill Neptune and attacks the coup leader, sending him flying back. After Jinbei shouts for the rest of the crew, Nami manages to steal back the World Noble's letter as well as the keys to the royal family's locks, which Robin uses to free them. Above the plaza are the Thousand Sunny and Neptune's Whale, Hoi. The Sunny blasts the new Fishman pirates with a Gaon cannon while the Whale rescues his master and the princess. The island residents ask Luffy if he's a friend or a foe, to which he responds that it's their call to make. The rest of the crew then gather at the plaza and are prepared to engage Hody's crew in combat alongside Jinbei. Upon hearing that Hody ultimately plans to become the Pirate King, Luffy becomes enraged. When Hody orders his subordinates to attack the Straw Hats, Luffy unleashes a burst of Haushoku Haki and knocks out half of them in an instant. He then tells Hody that no matter what kind of king he plans to become, there can only be one Pirate King. Luffy activates Gear 3 and takes out more of Hody's men. As the battle with the new Fishman Pirates commences, Luffy takes the time to gaze and admire Frankie's new weapons from the Soldier Dock system, the Black Rhino and the Brachio Tank. When Hody commands Sudame to attack, Luffy reminds the Kraken that they're friends. Luffy then hops on Sudame's back as the Beast attacks the new Fishman Pirates. When Hody threatens to kill Sudame's family at the North Pole for disobeying him, Luffy understands why Sudame had to join with him. He then tells the Kraken that he'll protect his brothers too. He then walks over to Hody, enraged at the Fishman's threats. He dodges the attacking pirates and gives the Fishman a swift and devastating kick to the Fishman's jaw. Hody then retaliates by punching Luffy's face, but due to Luffy's rubber body and Hody's amateur Fishman karate, Luffy's neck stretches back. Luffy takes advantage of the situation and uses his Busoshoku Haki to harden his forehead. When the Iron Shell Division comes to guard Hody, Luffy uses his head to smash right through. He then uses his Haki again to harden his arm and block a kick from Hody, and then hardens his leg to give Hody a powerful kick of his own. Hody attacks with a Yabusame Barrage, but Luffy uses his Kenbun Shoku Haki to dodge it, before giving Hody a Haki imbued punch that sent him flying. Luffy noted that Hody was tough when he managed to get back up. Upon seeing Shirahoshi willing to sacrifice herself so that Noah would not destroy the island, and Hody climbing up underneath Noah to go after Vander Dekken, Luffy told his crew that he's going up there. Upon receiving a bubble-making coral from Jinbei, Luffy grabs onto Sanji's leg and prepares to be catapulted up to Noah. After Sanji sends Luffy flying, he lands on one of the chains. Luffy equips himself with a flutter kick coating before he goes into the sea. Hody attempts to attack Luffy, but he's helped by Fukuboshi. Luffy tells Fukuboshi to take him to the deck of Noah, but Hody goes ahead of them. After Hody deals a devastating blow to Dekken, he tries to kill Shirahoshi. Luffy grabs Hody and throws him away. Hody is undeterred and is still confident that Fishman Island will be destroyed and that Luffy cannot do anything to stop it. However, Luffy is confident in his own abilities after his two-year training. When Shirahoshi changes course, Hody attempts to stop her but is grabbed by Luffy again. Unfortunately, Dekken passes out and the ship no longer follows Shirahoshi and begins to fall. 
Luffy then plans on destroying Noah, but Fukuboshi tells him that the ship is too important to destroy and that they should move it instead. As Luffy and the princess fight against Hody, he keeps interfering with their attempts to stop Noah. Luffy punches Hody into the ship, and Hody slices a hole in the air bubble in retaliation, preventing Luffy from boarding it. After Fukuboshi learns Hody's true character, Hody then tries to stop Luffy and Shirahoshi again, but Luffy breaks his kirisame and sends Hody flying back, and Hody once again gets back up. Fukuboshi tells Luffy about how the new Fishman pirates were formed out of hatred and resentment. As the prince laments on how everything has been happening, he asks Luffy to bring Fishman Island back to zero. Luffy tells Fukuboshi that he will not let anyone hurt Fishman Island because they are friends. Hody once again charged at Luffy, but Luffy managed to deliver a very devastating blow to Hody's chest. After the attack, Hody was sent flying towards Noah and crashed there. After getting up and seeing Luffy coming towards him, he eats more pills and prepares to attack Luffy. He uses a new attack called Murasame, but he fails as Luffy dodges his attack. Luffy then counterattacks using Elephant Gun and finally defeats Hody Jones. After Hody has been dealt with, Luffy starts destroying Noah. As he barrages the ship with his attacks, the wound he received from Hody starts opening up, much to Shirahoshi's horror. Luffy wrecks the ship piece by piece until Shirahoshi suddenly yells at Luffy to stop. Luffy then sees that the ship has been stopped by the Sea Kings. With the Sea King's help, Luffy no longer needs to destroy Noah. As Luffy faints from his wound, he's glad that everyone's safe. He loses a lot of blood from the battle. Shirahoshi carries Luffy back to the plaza. Chopper requests a blood donor, but the citizens are reluctant to help. Jinbei volunteers. During the transfusion, Luffy regains consciousness and asks Jinbei to join his crew. Not wanting to be thanked as heroes, Luffy and the others quickly leave the plaza. Jinbei declines Luffy's offer of joining the Straw Hats. Jinbei states that while he's grateful for the offer, he has unfinished business to attend to. But once all that's done, and if he still wants him to join, Jinbei will gladly join, and Luffy agrees. One of Neptune's guards catches up with the crew, and through a Denden Mushi, Neptune invites the crew to a banquet. Luffy gladly accepts, and went to get Hachi and Kami first. They all arrive at the palace and have a huge party in honor of their victory. After partying for a while, Jinbei talks to Luffy and his present crew members about some important information. Jinbei brings them up to speed about what happened during the two years they were all away. He informs them of a dispute between Aokiji and Akainu over the position of Fleet Admiral. Akainu won the position and Aokiji stepped down rather than serving under Akainu. Jinbei then explains about the Blackbeard Pirates' rise to power with Blackbeard becoming an emperor. He also warns them that the Blackbeard Pirates are stealing the abilities of powerful Devil Fruit users for themselves, but Luffy ignores him and states that he works better without making plans. Luffy then senses something wrong and goes to check on Shirahoshi with Zoro and Sanji and finds Caribou trying to abduct her. Luffy saves Shirahoshi by sending Caribou flying out of the palace. When Nami finds out that Caribou has treasures in him, she sends Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji to capture him and get the treasures for her. The trio then find an unconscious caribou and collect all the stolen treasures. On their way back to the palace, they spot a crowd in front of the candy factory. Luffy then casually tells Big Mom's messengers that he ate all the candy. One of the messengers, Pekoms, then wonders what candy Luffy's talking about. However, his crewmate Baron Tamago interferes, asking if Luffy really ate the candy. Luffy says that he did, and Tamago explains that Fishman Island is under the protection of Big Mom, and that the island will be destroyed if the monthly offering of candies will not be done. The Den Den Mushi rings, and Pekom says that it's Big Mom calling. Luffy picks it up and shouts, telling her that he's going to be Pirate King and that he ate all the candies on Fishman Island. Big Mom does not believe him at first, saying that he's only covering up for Fishman Island. Luffy strongly insists that he did and offers treasures to the Emperor. Tamago then suggests Big Mom should accept the money because of the fact that the Kid Pirate sank two of their ships. Big Mom shouts at him, saying that she has decided to target Luffy in place of Fishman Island. Luffy challenges her, saying that he will defeat her and make Fishman Island his territory. Even though Luffy infuriates Big Mom, he still hands over the treasures to Tamago and Pekoms. The monster trio then return to Ryugu Palace and explain the situation to everyone there. The three then receive a beating from Nami for giving away the treasures. Later, when the Straw Hats are departing Fishman Island, Shirahoshi tearfully wishes for Luffy to stay longer, which causes Luffy to scold her for crying so much, and she apologizes. After the Straw Hats leave, Shirahoshi swears to Luffy that she'll stop being a crybaby. Luffy then makes a pinky promise with her that if they meet again, he will take her to the surface. After sailing away from the island, Luffy looks forward to seeing Shanks again. As they come to the new world, the crew decides to catch some sea monsters to eat. As they try to catch some, they get caught in a white storm and are sucked in but stopped by a group of whales that resemble Laboon. After Brooks sings Binks' sake to pleasure them, they help take them to the New World surface, and Luffy says the weather is perfect after everyone else commented on the weather. Punk Hazard Arc Soon, the crew spots an island surrounded by a sea of flames. Luffy was excited to go there, even though it seemed dangerous to approach the island. The crew then heard a Den Den Mushi ringing, and Luffy answered it, ignoring Robin's warnings that it could be a trap set up by the marines. 
Luffy then received a call from someone who seemed to be in trouble and supposedly resided on Punk Hazard. Luffy then decided to rescue the mysterious person. After Nami created a road of clouds, Luffy went to the island with Zoro, Usopp, and Robin. When they got there, they explored and found a massive skull that they determined to be larger than the giants. Suddenly, they encountered a massive dragon. As Luffy and his companions were surprised, the dragon asked who they are. The group engaged the dragon in battle. While fighting the battle, Luffy discovered that a pair of legs attached to the top of the dragon was the source of the talking. Eventually, with a combined effort from Usopp and Luffy, Zoro managed to cleave the dragon's head off. Luffy then pulled the pair of legs off of the dragon's head, and the group was shocked that it did not have an upper body. The pair of legs then took off in pursuit of a Shichibukai, while Luffy excitedly asked the legs to join his crew. After the group cut up and ate the dragon meat and took the rest with them, they continued their expedition. Luffy decided to play with the legs, placing them on his back and pretending to be a centaur, even though the legs kept flipping him over. Zoro then drew the group's attention to a remarkable sight a lake separating the flaming half of the island from a frozen mountainous region on the other half. Usopp then saw a humanoid figure with wings. While Zoro, Usopp, and Robin received a call from Brook, Luffy met a centaur, whom Luffy then fought and defeated. A second centaur appeared and attacked Luffy, but Robin subdued it. The group then decided to go to the frozen side of the island. To cross the lake, Usopp formed a boat from Pop Greens. As Luffy's group rode on the boat, the centaur that Luffy had just fought jumped after them and informed his boss that the pirates were heading his way. The four straw hats then saw a group of centaurs waiting for them on the other side. The centaurs fired their bazookas at the water around the boat, capsizing it and leaving Usopp and Zoro to keep Luffy and Robin afloat. Zoro moved to attack the centaurs, but was instead dragged underwater by sharks. The centaurs prepared to attack the Straw Hats again, but they were stopped by Brook, giving Luffy, Zoro, Robin, and Usopp enough time to escape the lake. After emerging from the freezing water, the four Straw Hats planned on stealing coats from the centaurs. After defeating them and stealing their coats, the group used Brownbeard as transportation to Vegapunk's former research facility. They soon arrived at the scene where Trafalgar, Law, and Smoker just fought. Seeing Law, Luffy reacted in surprise and enjoyment. Luffy quickly thanked him for his help two years ago and asked him where the talking bear was. Law simply stated that they are both pirates, reminding Luffy that they are rivals, and then told Luffy to head to the backside of the facility. Right after Law went back to the building, Luffy's group quickly left the scene to get away from the marines. The group then met up with their remaining crew members. While taking shelter in a laboratory ruin, Luffy was saddened that he had to give back his extra legs to the samurai from Wano, and was surprised to learn that Law had become a Shichibukai. The Straw Hats then tied up Brownbeard and brought each other up to speed on the current situation. After interrogating Brownbeard, they learned about a man known as Caesar Clown. Kinemon later left the group to find his torso, and Sanji, Brook, and Zoro went out to find him. Before long, several of the giant children started to feel pain, saying that they needed candy usually given to them in order to make the pain go away. However, Chopper stated that the candy contains a drug to which the children had become addicted, and Luffy's group learned that the children had been experimented upon. One of the giant children then hit Luffy, and the others went on a rampage, forcing Usopp to put them to sleep. Luffy's group decided to help the children and find Caesar Clown. They tied up the giant children so they could not destroy anything else. Luffy, Usopp, Frankie, and Robin then left with Chopper and Nami to watch the children while they headed to Caesar's lab. While they were gone, Luffy's group heard an explosion coming from the hideout and Luffy detected the presence of two animals. They quickly turned back to help Nami and Chopper. When they returned, the Yeti Cool Brothers opened fire on Luffy and then disappeared when Luffy tried to attack. It was then revealed that Nami, in Frankie's body, had been captured. Luffy then saw that Brownbeard had been shot by the brothers and Luffy's group realized that Caesar was warped enough to turn on his own loyal subordinates. Luffy and Frankie, in Chopper's body, decided to go after the Yeti Cool Brothers to rescue Nami. Frankie took a rumble ball from Chopper and immediately used it, ignoring Chopper's advice on how to use it. Frankie transformed into Monster Point and went on a rampage when chasing after Luffy. Luffy and Frankie followed the giant footprints and fell into an ambush by Scotch and Rock. They first tried to skewer Luffy with Icicle Pincushion. Luffy easily destroyed the trap unharmed with a hockey-enhanced Gomu Gomu no Gatling gun. Rock then fired some shots at Luffy. Luffy countered with Gomu Gomu no Thank You Fire, deflecting the bullets right back at Rock, dealing some damage. Scotch then fired a shot at the mountaintop, causing a giant ice shard to start falling towards Luffy and Frankie. Rock prepared to attack again, but Frankie grabbed the shard and knocked out Rock with it. Once Frankie tried to attack Luffy again, Luffy knocked him out with Elephant Gun. Scotch then grabbed Nami and attempted to make a run for it, with Luffy chasing after him. Law arrived and cut Scotch in half. Scotch tried to retaliate against Law, only to be knocked out by Law's countershock. As Luffy broke Nami's chains, Law proposed to Luffy to form an alliance in order to take down one of the four emperors. Luffy accepts the offer, much to Nami's protests. Luffy, Frankie, Nami, and Law then return to the hideout. The rest of the Straw Hats are surprised that Luffy actually formed an alliance with Law. Law returns Frankie and Chopper to their bodies while putting Nami in Sanji's body. 
Chopper scolds Luffy and Frankie for causing damage to his body. The Straw Hats and Law then form a plan to capture Caesar while helping the children. Luffy is later seen flying with Frankie and Robin towards Caesar's lab. After crashing through a marine warship, he prepares with the others to kidnap Caesar Clown. Tashigi, in Smoker's body, then confronts Luffy, but Luffy easily pins her down. Smoker, in Tashigi's body, steps in and fights Luffy himself. After learning that Smoker is not in his own body, Luffy laughs and tells him that they'll fight another day. After Frankie blasts the doors, Luffy and his group prepare to storm the facility. Before they enter, pieces of poisonous slime start falling from the sky. Caesar then appears outside of the facility and starts explaining about the slime creature, but is interrupted when Luffy grabs onto him. Luffy and Caesar subsequently engage into battle. Caesar uses gas robe on Luffy and he inhales all of Caesar's poison gas. Luffy then expels the gas through his ears, much to the surprise of Caesar's subordinates. Luffy laughs at Caesar by saying that his poison does not work on him thanks to an immunity he gained from his battle with Magellan. He attacks Caesar again, and just when he's about to land another blow, Caesar attacks Luffy with gas tank and Luffy gets caught with the explosion. After that, Luffy was trapped by slime and was later dealt with another gas tank. Luffy evades the attacks and proceeds to deal a final blow to Caesar, momentarily defeating him. Before Luffy's group can complete their capture of Caesar, Luffy suddenly faints. As Robin and Frankie wonder what happened, Caesar laughs and says that Luffy underestimated him. Luffy is then seen lying unconscious alongside Robin, Frankie, Smoker, and Tashigi, who were all knocked out by Caesar. He's then locked in the research facility with Robin, Frankie, Smoker, Tashigi, and Law. When Virgo reveals himself to be working with Joker, Luffy asks Law who Joker is. Law tells him that Joker is Don Quixote do Flamingo. While Clown is giving out his broadcast to the underworld brokers about his experiment with his chemical mass destruction weapon, Luffy and the other captives are just sitting passively in their cell. After Virgo is seen with Law's heart and inflicts pain on Law by using his heart, Luffy is surprised Law can still survive without it. After Smiley explodes and spreads a poisonous cloud, the prisoners witness the destructive effects of the gas as some of Caesar's subordinates succumb to it. Luffy then sees Sanji, Zoro, Kinemon, and Brook all running away from the gas cloud. He then yells, that they have to run and cannot die, but is weakened by the Sea Stone Stone. Caesar Clown proceeds to move the captives outside of the facility to die. Luffy then asks how Law plans to escape, watching as the Warlord begins his escape plan. Law directs Frankie to launch his Frankie Fireball at the segregated battleship down below. The wood is set alight, and the smoke from the burning wreck then rises up to the cage, allowing them to discreetly take action. Law quickly reveals that he had replaced some of the sea stone handcuffs with regular ones, allowing him to escape easily and goes on to free Luffy and the others. Using Law's devil fruit powers, they're then moved into the laboratory where they open the shutters, allowing everyone outside to escape the poison gas. Seeing the remaining members of his crew arrive, Luffy gleefully claims the battle has really begun. When his crew are confronted by the G5 Marines, Luffy asks if the fight has started. Law interrupts the Marines and tells them of a way off the island, but they will have two hours to escape. Luffy asks him what will happen, and Law replies that he'll do something dangerous. When the group split up, Luffy decides to go after Caesar Clown once again. After Zoro hears about Luffy's earlier defeat at the hands of Caesar, he yells at Luffy, telling him not to be careless and reminds him that they are in the New World. Luffy agrees and proceeds to attack a group of Caesar's subordinates standing in his way. He later defeats Run the Machete with one strike and continues through the hallway to Passage B. Luffy and Smoker eventually pass through the B building and reach Caesar's location. Before entering the room that Caesar's in, Smoker tells Luffy that Virgo is his enemy. Luffy replies that he will get Caesar. Once they see the scientist, Luffy immediately gives him a punch. Luffy and Caesar fight for a while, and just when Luffy is gaining the upper hand, Monet steps in and interrupts. She makes a barrier over Caesar, which Luffy breaks with Jet Gatling. Monet lets Caesar escape and tells Luffy that if anything bad happens to him, Doflamingo will kill her. Luffy then asks what Doflamingo is, instead of who he is. Monet, however, simply locks him in a 10-layered snow hut and begins to weaken him with her powers. Luffy, however, simply blasts through the floor with a jet spear and falls into the basement. However, Monet tells him that unless he can fly, there is no way out of the basement. While exploring the garbage dump in the basement, Luffy encounters yet another dragon and asks who it is. Surprisingly, the dragon replies back, asking the same question. The dragon then introduces himself as Momonosuke. However, Luffy thinks it's an eel and is surprised that it can talk. After Momonosuke points out that he is not edible, Luffy introduces himself as the man who is going to become Pirate King. Momonosuke does not believe him and starts telling Luffy about his perception of pirates, but Luffy interrupts. Momonosuke then explains his backstory, which includes him being taken to Punk Hazard, going to the secret room, and eating a devil fruit, which transformed him into a dragon. Luffy tells Momonosuke that he should just turn back into a human, but Momonosuke does not know how. Momonosuke then continues his story, where he overheard Caesar telling Monet that the children will die in five years, and he'll get new ones then. 
He then finishes his story by telling Luffy about how he ended up in the garbage dump. Luffy becomes angry after learning how horrible Caesar is and he tells Momonosuke to hold on to him as he plans on climbing up the wall to get out and rescue the children. Momonosuke then has a hallucination of Doflamingo's face and flies out of the basement with Luffy hanging on to him. They later escape the garbage dump through a dustbin. Luffy then confronts three of Caesar Clown's underlings, demanding Caesar's location. The frightened underlings immediately tell him that Caesar is in Building R, straight along the corridor. Luffy then arrives at Building R just in time to save Brownbeard by knocking away Caesar with a hockey-imbued Gear 3 attack. As Luffy prepares for a third confrontation, Caesar taunts him, telling Luffy that he will be in danger from both Doflamingo and an Emperor if he attacks him. Luffy then punches Caesar in the face, saying that he's been dealing with people like that since he entered the Grand Line. Caesar then warns Luffy again about the type of people he's dealing with and attempts to retaliate with a gas burner attack. Luffy dodges and punches Caesar in the face again. Caesar then forces his men into the control room to open the air vents, allowing his gaseous weapon to flow in. Caesar absorbs his weapon and grows bigger. He then kills more of his subordinates, angering Luffy further. Luffy asks Momonosuke to look after Brownbeard and then runs into a hallway to get some distance away from Caesar. Luffy enters Gear 3 and charges at Caesar, angrily shouting that he does not want to see his face anymore. He attacks Caesar with Grizzly Magnum, not only sending him through the gate of the escape passage, but also setting him flying outside the lab. With Caesar out of the way, Luffy is then reunited with his crew and the kidnapped children. Luffy meets Law and Smoker again in the corridor between Building R and D. When Luffy tells Law that he sent Caesar flying, Law scolds him for not following the plan of capturing him. Chopper, Brook, Kidemon, Mocha, and some of the G5 Marines still have not arrived at Building R. Luffy waits patiently for them despite Law's urges to escape as soon as possible. Fortunately, the remaining group arrives safely before the gate to Building R seals off. Everyone boards the rail car and goes through the escape passage. While going through the escape passage, Luffy helps defend the cart from the falling rubble. They find Frankie in his Frankie Shogun after he was just fighting against Buffalo and Baby Five. As the pair attempt to flee with Caesar, Law prepares to stop them himself, but Usopp and Nami insisted to handle it by themselves. Luffy encourages Law to give his crew a chance. After the defeat of Buffalo and Baby Five and the successful capture of Caesar, Luffy smiles as Law declares the first stage of his plan complete. During the aftermath, Luffy had a friendly chat with Brownbeard, who decided to turn himself into the Marines. Luffy was then surprised to see Kinemon breaking to pieces and then reforming to his normal state. Luffy was also surprised to see Momonosuke return to his human form. Sanji made food for the father and son and Luffy was excited to see such delicious food. He tried to convince Momonosuke to eat, but the boy was hesitant at first. Momonosuke and Kinemon eventually ate together and everyone gathered drooling at the food. Law warned Luffy that it cannot get out of hand and that they will have to leave as soon as possible, and Luffy agreed, but moments after, he declares the party started. Luffy enjoys the food with his crew and new friends. As Tashigi and her men took the children away from Punk Hazard, Luffy left with his crew, Law, Kinemon, and Momonosuke. They were later seen on a sea slope. After Nami informed him that their next destination was Dress Rosa, Luffy told everyone to gather around so he and Law could explain the next plan. Luffy and everyone listened as Law explained about Doflamingo's connection to the underworld and the plan to decimate Kaido's forces. Luffy then asked Kinemon if he had something to do on Dress Rosa. The samurai replied that he has a comrade being held prisoner there. During the evening, Luffy was having fun fishing while wearing a samurai helmet and watching Zoro and Kinemon fight each other. The next morning, everyone read the news explaining Doflamingo's resignation from the Shichibukai. They also saw that the paper mentioned Luffy and Law's alliance as well as one alliance between Kid, Hawkins, and Apu. Law told Luffy to disregard the other pirate alliance and only focus on their plan. Dress Rosa Arc Law contacted Doflamingo to discuss the next part of the negotiation. Luffy suddenly interrupted the call and angrily asked Doflamingo if he's the boss of Caesar. Doflamingo stated his desire to see Luffy and informed the Straw Hat captain that he has something that he would want to get, which Luffy thought it was meat. Luffy was then put into a trance until Usopp snapped him out of it. After Law told Doflamingo that he'll bring Caesar to Greenbit, he and the Straw Hat planned on how to destroy the Smile Factory on Dress Rosa. Luffy then got more excited to see Dress Rosa and the crew have a big meal. While eating, Luffy heard Law and Kinemon talking about a place called Zo. Luffy then listened to Kinemon and Momonosuke's story about how they were shipwrecked and drifted to Dress Rosa, as well as how Momonosuke was separated from his father. After hearing about how Kanjuro helped Kinemon escape, Luffy excitedly declared that they should save him too. The Thousand Sunny soon approached Dress Rosa. After disembarking, the group began their next phase of their operation. Luffy thought about using Momonosuke in his dragon form to fly. However, Momonosuke refused to do so. When Luffy asked him if he's afraid of heights, they got into a small fight until Kinemon broke them up. The group split into three teams, and Luffy went into Dress Rosa with Zoro, Sanji, Frankie, and Kinemon to destroy the factory and rescue Kanjuro. While exploring, they saw the things that the country is famous for, including living toys. 
After getting disguises, they stopped at a restaurant to get something to eat. There, they found some thugs taking advantage of a blind man while taking away his money in roulette. The man then demonstrated his gravity-like ability when the thugs attacked Luffy for calling their bluff. As the man left, Luffy asked who he was, only for the man to say it was better for both of them if he did not know. After one of Zoro's swords is stolen, he chased after the thief with Sanji and Kinemon in tow. Luffy attempted to follow them for fun, but was stopped by Frankie. Instead, they interrogated one of the thugs, who happened to be a subordinate of Doflamingo, for the location of the Smile Factory. The thug claimed that he didn't know anything about it. He then said that most of Doflamingo's crew members were at the Coliseum where there was a tournament being held for a big prize. At first, Luffy thought it was meat, thinking back to his conversation with Doflamingo, only for the thug to inform them that the prize was actually Ace's former devil fruit. Luffy decided to compete for the fruit, not wanting just anyone to eat it. He offered the fruit to Frankie, but he declined, not wanting to lose his ability to swim. Even though the initial objectives were to find the factory and Conjuro, Frankie felt Luffy deserved the chance to fight for the fruit. Luffy and Frankie later arrive at Korra Coliseum, where they meet a one-legged toy soldier called Thunder Soldier. While Frankie told Luffy that he could go full out in the tournament, it was best to keep his identity secret. He nearly gave himself away when he almost signed his own name. But thanks to Frankie stopping him, he ended up signing in as Lucy. He was then taken to the waiting room where he met all the contestants. One of them called Spartan attacked Luffy thinking he was a weakling. Much to the other contestants' surprise, Luffy easily defeated Spartan. One of the staff members of the Coliseum was about to disqualify Luffy. Luckily, Sai and Boo from the Chinjiao family stepped in and spoke on Luffy's behalf, saying that Spartan was the one who started the fight. After thanking the Chinjiao family for saving him from disqualification, Luffy learned that he'd been assigned to Block C. Once he was inside the battle preparation room, Luffy got excited seeing all the armor and decided to put some on to make himself look cooler. While learning about the Coliseum's weight restriction on protective gear, Luffy was greeted by Cavendish, captain of the beautiful pirates. Luffy accidentally told him his own name, but the other contestants thought he was mispronouncing his alias, Lucy. Cavendish then proceeded to tell Luffy his backstory, such as how he came to resent the 11 supernovas, but Luffy ignored him during the middle of the conversation. He then sees a bronze statue of a man named Kiros. While admiring the statue, he met a female gladiator named Rebecca, who told him the story of Kiros. Luffy then sees that Rebecca was determined to win the Meramera Nomi to defeat Doflamingo. After Luffy and Rebecca finished their conversation, the winner of Block A was announced, and Luffy was shocked to see that it was Jesus Burgess. Before Block B began, Luffy took a look at the warriors defeated by Burgess. He was then approached by Bellamy, who told him that he also visited Skypiea. Bellamy said that his reason for joining the tournament was for a chance to join Doflamingo's crew. He went on saying that he has no grudge against Luffy and that he would not laugh at him again. Luffy watched Block B with Cavendish. As the fights in Block B went on, Chin Zhao approached Luffy and asked him about Garp, revealing Luffy's identity to Cavendish in the process. Luffy kept denying his true identity, but Cavendish drew his sword, preparing to attack Luffy anyway. However, Chin Zhao made the first move, striking at Luffy with a headbutt. Right after Luffy dodged the attack, Cavendish tried to force Luffy to take off his fake beard. Chin Zhao then launched another attack, but Cavendish wards off the second headbutt with his sword. Chin Zhao continuously assaulted both Luffy and Cavendish with his headbutts until Luffy punched him into the ground. When Chin Zhao became very furious, Boo and Sai came to stop him. While the two managed to calm him down, Luffy hid himself by hanging from a windowsill. Luffy continued to watch the match and witnessed Bartolomeo deflecting Hack's attack, which also damaged Hack's hand as well. As he continued to watch the battle in the arena, he was wondering how Bartolomeo was able to damage Hack like that. He then witnessed that even Bellamy could not stand up against Bartolomeo's strange power. He then cheered Bellamy on, urging him to give it his all. After that, King Elizabello finally threw his legendary King Punch, which took out all the remaining gladiators in the arena. Even Luffy said that it was an incredible punch and that he'd never seen anything like it. Before the king was declared the winner of B-Block's Battle Royale, Bartolomeo emerged unharmed and revealed that he had eaten the Baribari no Mi and created a barrier to protect himself. He then took out the king and was declared the winner of Block B, much to Luffy's surprise. As an injured Bellamy was moved out of the ring, he and Luffy had another friendly chat and commented on how the other had changed. Meanwhile, Bartolomeo overheard Bellamy calling him Straw Hat. When Block C started, Luffy entered the ring before Cavendish could confront him. When the gong was heard, Luffy was excited to start fighting. As the battle royale went on, Luffy was seen defeating an opponent effortlessly. Sometime during the battle royale, Luffy tamed and befriended the fighting bull, naming him Usi. Luffy rode on top of him as he rampaged around the ring. The bull was eventually stopped and crushed by Hajruddin. Luffy then avenged Usi by eliminating Hajruddin from the competition with a knockout punch. Afterwards, Luffy removed Usi from the fighting area by carrying him over his right shoulder. When he was finished, Luffy entered the fight once again only to have his helmet stolen by a bounty hunter, who heard a rumor that he was Straw Hat Luffy, forcing him to use his cape to hide his identity. The bounty hunter then threw multiple weapons at him, which Luffy was able to dodge with ease. 
The weapons aimed at Luffy hit Chin Zhao instead. Luffy then took back his helmet before Chin Zhao knocked the bounty hunter from the ring. Seeing that Chin Zhao was hell-bent on taking his grudge out on him, Luffy decided to fight him head-on. Before clashing with Chin Zhao, he knocked out Sai while Chin Zhao knocked out Idio. As the two remaining fighters in the battle royale, Luffy and Chin Zhao clashed their fists against each other, causing a large wave of Haushoku Haki to burst through the arena. After Luffy declared his goal of becoming the Pirate King, Chin Zhao asked him who taught him hockey, and Luffy answered that it was Rayleigh. Chin Zhao then bursts into tears, mentioning about a treasure he was not able to acquire. Luffy told Chin Zhao to stick to either crying or getting angry, and then continued his clash. After taking some punches from him, Luffy struck back with a powerful attack of his own, hitting him in the chest with his Gomu Gomu no Hawk rifle. After recovering, Chin Zhao began mocking Luffy, telling him that those known as the worst generation are greenhorns who do not know anything of the world, and saying that his attempts to surpass Roger are laughable. He then enraged Luffy by saying executing Ace was a smart move by the Marines. Luffy then proceeded to launch himself into the air with Gomu Gomu no Rocket using Chin Zhao as leverage. He then activated Gear 3 and launched his Gomu Gomu no Thor elephant gun while Chin Zhao took the attack head-on with a headbutt. The two collided, seemingly matched until Luffy managed to gain the upper hand, which coincidentally restored Chin Zhao's head to the shape it was before his final battle with Garp. Chin Zhao was then knocked out and fell down to the arena, splitting it in half with his newly reformed head. Chin Zhao then sank into the water unconscious, and Luffy officially won Block C. Luffy stood victorious as the audience cheered for him. After Luffy left the arena, Cavendish thrust his sword at him, but he caught the sword effortlessly and held on tightly. Chin Zhao arrived, wanting to thank Luffy for restoring his head, but accidentally broke the floor when trying to bow in respect. Luffy ran away from both Cavendish and Chin Zhao and was saved by Rebecca. He then ran into Burgess, who was communicating with Blackbeard through Den Den Mushi. Luffy declared that he would not allow Ace's power to fall into Blackbeard's hands. At the gladiator's quarters, Rebecca bought him some food and sat next to him. Some gladiators behind prison bars caught Luffy and after some hesitation, she tried to kill him with her sword. Luffy dodged the attack and pinned her down. Rebecca asked him why he did not seek retribution. Luffy answered that he would not do anything to someone who bought him food. Rebecca then proceeded to tell him about the convict gladiators and how they were imprisoned in the Colosseum for opposing Doflamingo. She said that she wanted to win the Meramera Nomi in order to be able to protect herself and not have to rely on the Thunder Soldier, who was planning an attack against Doflamingo. Rebecca then explained to Luffy about how the toys are no different than humans, and how her mother died and Thunder Soldier was her guardian after her mother's death, which is why he's so important to her. The conversation was interrupted by Gats announcing that the ring is repaired and Block D is about to commence. When Rebecca entered the arena, the audience booed and jeered at her. Luffy angrily wondered why, and one of the convict gladiators informed him that Rebecca is the previous king's granddaughter. Having also been wrongly judged by Chin Zhao due to his relation to Garp, Luffy responded by saying that Rebecca has nothing to do with her grandfather, which the convict gladiators agreed. When Cavendish stood up for Rebecca and stopped the audience's booing and jeering, Luffy commented that while he still disliked Cavendish, he was not so bad. As he watched Rebecca's fight during the Block D Battle Royale, he commented that Rebecca can use Kenbon Shoku Haki. He continued to cheer Rebecca on. He later decided to move to a different place to watch the fight. Before leaving, he was told by the convict gladiators about the country's dark side that the public knew nothing about. As he exited the gladiators' quarters, he encountered Bartolomeo. Bartolomeo guided Luffy to Zoro and Kinemon, with the former being annoyed at the fact that he was not invited to fight in the Colosseum. He then informs Luffy that the Colosseum is surrounded by Marines, who quickly dismisses the fact besides Kinemon's shock. They engage in a conference call with Sanji and Frankie's group. Everyone is then brought up to speed on the current situation as they learn about the true situation on Dress Rosa. When Frankie pleads to Luffy to allow him to help the dwarves and toys, Luffy quickly gave his permission to assist with the revolution. Just as the call ends, a battle between Law and Doflamingo, which raged across Dress Rosa, abruptly ended right outside the Colosseum, with Doflamingo standing above his opponent. Luffy cried out to Law in horror as Doflamingo shot him three times at close range. Luffy then angrily yelled at Doflamingo, who responded by saying it was his duty to discipline Law. Zoro and Kinemon rushed to save Law. Zoro was interrupted by Isho, the blind man they encountered earlier, and Kinemon was kicked away by Doflamingo before he could retrieve Law. Luffy tried to help his friends, but realized that the bars in the windows of the Colosseum are made of sea stone. The entire crew was shocked to be told by Kinemon that the blind gambler was actually an admiral. Both Doflamingo and Isho float above their opponents using their abilities, taking Law with them and heading towards the palace. After the marines started pursuing Zoro and Kinemon, Zoro told Luffy to find the exit. As Luffy informed the two swordsmen that Law is still alive, they heard that the Sunny is under attack by the Big Mom pirates who are after Caesar Clown. During the commotion, Nami told Luffy that Law tried so hard to keep Caesar and Momonosuke away from Doflamingo and cannot allow them to fall into his hands. Luffy gave Sanji's group permission to head for Zo and also allowed Sanji to counterattack against the Big Mom pirates. 
While leaving Frankie's group in charge of destroying the Smile Factory, Luffy decided to head to the palace with Zoro and Kinemon to rescue Law and fight Doflamingo. While looking for an exit out of the Colosseum, he found Bartolomeo carrying a wounded Bellamy. Luffy said that he was leaving the tournament since rescuing his friends come first. Bartolomeo proudly declared that he will get the Mera Mera Nomi for him, but someone interrupted them and declared that the fruit could not be given to Luffy. Luffy then talked to this person and recognized him as his older brother, Sabo, whom he believed to be dead. Luffy began crying in happiness and disbelief and embraced his brother. Sabo was glad that Luffy was alive and Luffy gave him permission to eat the Mera Mera Nomi at his request. Before leaving, Luffy gave Sabo his gladiator costume so he can take his place in the tournament. Luffy later escaped the Colosseum to meet up with Zoro and Kinemon. The trio wore disguises to elude the Marines. As they ran away from the Colosseum, Luffy was still crying over the revelation that his brother was still alive. Luffy, Zoro, and Kinemon later arrived at the lift that leads to the royal palace alongside the dwarf, Wicca. There they encountered Viola, who offered to guide them to the palace. After getting acquainted with her and learning about her ties with the Riku family, Luffy's group was then led to a secret passage. Once inside the passage, Zoro suggested that they use a basket used for lifting supplies, and that Luffy should climb up carrying a rock and hang from the chain to act as a counterweight for the basket to move up. Luffy gladly accepted the suggestion. They later arrived at the palace rampart tower. Viola was about to sneak them in, but Luffy went ahead and smashed his way through the gate, much to her chagrin. After Luffy took off his disguise, the group charged in. Once Luffy, Zoro, and Viola reached the rampart tower B1, they were interrupted by Pika. After Viola explained about Pika's devil fruit ability, Pika attempted to crush Luffy and his group with the palace walls. They managed to avoid it, and Zoro held off Pika while Luffy and Viola rushed on ahead, though they were hampered by Pika's power to create dead ends. They eventually ran into Thunder Soldier as he was about to be destroyed by Gladius. Luffy knocked away Gladius with a jet stamp and caught the toy soldier. Luffy was about to continue the fight with the officer, but Viola pulled him away, stating that Gladius was too dangerous. Gladius attacked the group, managing to wound Viola, which forced Luffy to carry her. Seeing no stairs to advance further up, Luffy jumped out a window and used his leg to stretch to the second floor conveniently outside the room of suits. As they overheard Doflamingo trying to get Law to tell him what the Straw Hat's plan was, Luffy asked if he could attack Doflamingo, only to be denied and told to wait by Viola. They later saw Gladius and his men approaching the second door. Thunder Soldier also spoke to Luffy about his realization that he and his crew were pirates, but also commented that it was reassuring that they shared the same goal. After Thunder Soldier transformed back into a human, Viola revealed to Luffy about Kiros, and everything that happened in Dress Rosa. After Kiros decapitated Doflamingo, Luffy grabbed Viola and charged in to save Law. While rushing to save Law, Viola gave Luffy the keys to Law's cuffs. Law told Luffy that their alliance already ended, but Luffy ignored him. His rescue of Law was interrupted by Pika's sudden appearance. Luffy was then surprised to see Doflamingo still alive. It was then revealed that the Doflamingo that was decapitated was only a copy. As Kiros attempted to attack the copy again, the real Doflamingo appeared behind Kiros and attempted to behead him with a kick, slicing the palace in the process. Luffy managed to save Kiros from a fatal blow. Doflamingo and his copy then tried to attack both Luffy and Kiros, but they jumped out of the way. Luffy retaliated by using Jet Gatling, but Doflamingo blocked the attack. His copy then struck Luffy from behind, and he followed by giving Luffy a punch to the face, knocking him back. Pika then threw Luffy, La, Kiros, Viola, and Riku Dold 3 out of the palace. They watched as Doflamingo initiated his birdcage plan, trapping everyone on Dress Rosa. After Pika relocated the royal palace to the top of the Flower Hill, Doflamingo forced everyone imprisoned into a survival game and put a price on the heads of 12 people. Luffy and his crew were included in Doflamingo's hit list. After reuniting with Zoro, Luffy spoke to Rebecca through Denden Den Mushi and informed her that the toy soldier was her father. He told her not to cry and stay close to Usopp, Robin, and Sabo. After declaring that he will defeat Doflamingo and end his game, Luffy grabbed Zoro and La and pursued Doflamingo. Luffy jumped down from the King's Plateau and they landed in the middle of a crowd of enemies. After a brief scuffle with Senor Pink, Machvice, and Dellinger, the Dress Rosa citizens started attacking Luffy and his group. Luffy was about to use hockey, but Isho arrived to confront them. Pika then appeared as a massive stone giant, looking for Doflamingo's enemies. Luffy laughed at his voice, making him angry. Pika then threw a punch, which sent Luffy, Zoro, and Law flying to the square in front of the Colosseum. They were soon approached by Cavendish, who explained that he had ceased his grudge against Luffy. Cavendish offered to defeat Doflamingo for Luffy, but the Straw Hat captain was adamant about defeating Doflamingo himself. They were then joined by those who also wished to fight Doflamingo. The Chinjao family, Hajruddin, Elizabella II, Dagama, Abdullah, Jeet, Orlumbus, Idio, Suleiman, and Blue Gilly. 
After the allied Coliseum fighters fought off the former toys who were after Doflamingo's prize money, Luffy was reunited with Usi. Luffy and his allies then marched towards the royal palace and began to battle against Pika. When Pika attempted to strike Luffy and his allies, Chinjao and Elizabella II shattered Pika's stone hand, enabling Luffy to move forward. Pika then attacked with his other arm, causing Luffy's allies to fall back. However, Luffy, Zoro, Law, Abdullah, Jeet, and Usi jumped on and climbed on Pika's arm. Pika regrew the arm that was shattered and prepared to attack again. Luffy responded by shattering Pika's stone head with Grizzly Magnum. Zoro discovered Pika's real body, which appeared in front of Luffy's group. Pika took out his sword and tried to attack the group riding on Usi, but Luffy carried the bull and evaded the sword strike. Zoro intercepted Pika when he attempted to strike Luffy again. As Usi ran on the stone giant's back, Law revealed to Luffy that the plan to defeat Kaido was just a trick to get revenge on Doflamingo for killing Corazon, a former executive officer of the Don Quixote family, Doflamingo's brother and Law's benefactor. Luffy, Law, Usi, Abdullah, and Jeet eventually reached the first level of the new King's Plateau. While charging, Luffy repelled the Don Quixote pirate's troops standing in the way. After Luffy saw that the other Coliseum fighters went ahead of them, Kelly Funk, while fused with Bobby Funk, appeared seemingly to aid them. Law asked Luffy what to do about his sea stone handcuffs, but Luffy assured him that things will work out. Kelly then showed them a tunnel that's supposed to go directly to the fourth level. While entering the tunnel, Luffy and Law were shocked to see Abdullah and Jeet fell off. After leaving those two behind, Luffy and Law were contacted by Robin through Den Den Mushi. Robin informed them that she will meet them at the fourth level. Luffy, Law, and Usi later reached a dead end. While the bull stood on top of a pool of water, a string clone of Doflamingo appeared behind them. The clone attacked Usi with bullet thread, knocking him unconscious. As the bull collapsed, Law and Luffy fell into the water and became powerless. Before the clone could kill them, Abdullah and Jeet struck the clone from behind, destroying it. After recovering, Luffy punched a hole to the second level with Elephant Gun and carried Law with him as he moved ahead of the allied Coliseum fighters. Cavendish approached Luffy and told him that he has a plan. Luffy and Law then rode on Cavendish's horse. During the fray, Kiros managed to hitch a ride on Feral as well. Luffy was happy to see him while Cavendish was displeased. Kiros was shocked when Luffy informed him that Rebecca was heading for the fourth level. Kiros reminded Luffy that Rebecca is on Doflamingo's hit list, but Luffy assured him that one of his crewmates was with her. When the other Coliseum fighters banded together, they created an opening for Luffy, Kiros, and Cavendish to go through. As Feral charged towards the third level, Luffy continued to repel any Don Quixote pirate's troops along the way. Luffy, Law, Cavendish, and Kiros then briefly argued over who would be the one to defeat Doflamingo. Once they reached the third level, they found giant toy soldiers standing in their way. One of the toy soldiers bit Feral on the head until Luffy punched it away. With Feral gravely injured, Luffy and his group prepared to battle the toy army. Just then, Robin, Bartolomeo, and Gladius fell from the sky and landed in front of them. Robin and Bartolomeo held back Gladius and the toys to enable Luffy's group to continue towards the fourth level where Rebecca would be waiting. Bartolomeo used his ability to create a stairway to the fourth level. Luffy thanked him, causing Bartolomeo to shed tears of joy. Kiros went ahead while Cavendish decided to remain on the third level to avenge his horse. As Luffy, while carrying Law, ran up towards the fourth level, Gladius launched rupture bullets at him. Bartolomeo protected Luffy by jumping into the line of fire. Once Luffy and Law reached the fourth level, Rebecca quickly gave them the key to Law's handcuffs. After removing the handcuffs, Kiros told Luffy and Law to go ahead while he fights Diamante. Luffy then told Rebecca that he was glad that she could see her father again. Rebecca then asked him if he would really defeat Doflamingo while still calling him Lucy. Luffy answered that his name is not Lucy and he told her his real name. Diamante tried to stop Luffy and Law, but Law teleported himself and Luffy to the palace pool garden. They were approached by Sugar, who intended to turn them into toys. Just as soon as she got close to them, Usopp sniped her from the old king's plateau and made her lose consciousness, saving both Luffy and Law. With Sugar out of the way, Luffy and Law finally reached Doflamingo. After seeing how Doflamingo treated Bellamy like trash, Luffy was enraged. Law warned him not to let his emotions get the better of him. Luffy attacked Doflamingo with his foot, but he used Bellamy as a shield. Doflamingo then created another string clone to fight Law while controlling Bellamy to fight Luffy. Bellamy begged Luffy to stop him, but Luffy refused as he considered Bellamy a friend. Luffy then aimed an attack at Law. Law activated Room and used Shambles to switch places with Doflamingo, allowing Luffy to strike him with Red Hawk. Once Doflamingo recovered from Luffy's attack, he stopped Law from attacking Treble and incapacitated him with Fulbright. He then struck Luffy with a hockey-imbued kick, tied his hands, and had Bellamy slash him. When both Luffy and Law are down, Doflamingo mentioned to them his past as a world noble. Doflamingo then sent his string clone and a controlled Bellamy to confront Luffy. And though Luffy attacked them with Octopus Gatling, the Doflamingo string clone got him from behind and slammed him through the floor into the palace interior. The Doflamingo clone spoke to Luffy about the cruelty of man, confusing Luffy. Luffy eventually managed to defeat the string clone, sending it flying through the roof with Jet Gatling. He then demanded Doflamingo to release Bellamy. Doflamingo decided to set Bellamy free and Luffy asked him to rest. 
he was going to have law, but Bellamy got up on his feet and continued on with the fight, refusing to betray his own principles and prepared to assault Luffy with his new and improved spring hopper. Luffy yelled at Bellamy for siding with the man who betrayed him and said it wasn't worth fighting, but Bellamy ignored him and drove into Luffy using spring hopper, punching him with a hockey imbued fist and causing Luffy to cough up blood. In spite of Luffy's pleas not to fight, Bellamy refused to back down and Luffy eventually decided to finish their fight, knocking out Bellamy in the same manner that he did at Jaya. Luffy then yelled out Doflamingo's name in anguish. Luffy then returned to the palace rooftops and resumed his battle with Doflamingo. As they clashed, Luffy stumbled upon Law's body, which was covered in blood. When Luffy tried to speak to Law, he was unresponsive and Doflamingo stated he was dead. Luffy refused to believe Doflamingo, who proceeded to taunt Luffy by mocking Law's last words, stating that he claimed these straw hats could create miracles. Luffy screamed out in rage as Doflamingo prepared to end his game. Doflamingo then informed Luffy that his birdcage is shrinking and in about one hour it will destroy everything in Dress Rosa. Luffy declared that he will stop it by defeating Doflamingo. As Luffy charged at his opponent, Law suddenly appears in front of the ladder and used Gamma Knife to damage Doflamingo's internal organs. Doflamingo grabbed onto Law's face, but Luffy kicked him away with Jet Stamp. As Doflamingo lay injured at Law's feet, Treble attempted to attack Law only to be kicked away by Luffy. Law used Countershock on Doflamingo and collapsed from exhaustion. However, Doflamingo stood back up, revealing that he can use his string powers to fix his internal injuries. Doflamingo attempted to stomp on Law's head, but Luffy quickly intervened. Doflamingo and Luffy battled intensely using Busoshoku and Haoshoku Haki. Though Luffy's first attacks were blocked, he managed to exploit an opening and punch Doflamingo repeatedly, ending with Gomu Gomu no Eagle Bazooka. However, Doflamingo evaded the Eagle Bazooka and kicked Luffy using Athlete's Thread, sending Luffy crashing into the ground right into Treble's trap. Treble held Luffy down so that Doflamingo could finish off Law once and for all. Luffy got mad at the executive and attempted to hit him with a Busoshoku Haki imbued fist. However, the attack had no effect, despite Luffy thinking Treble was a Logia. Law then told Luffy to stop attacking Treble, and Treble left a trapped Luffy to go to Law. Luffy witnessed Law wounding Treble and was caught in the explosion Treble created. However, Luffy managed to escape the explosion and carried Law with him. Luffy then threw Law down towards Robin and her group on the flower field, telling them to help Law. Not willing to let Law get away, Doflamingo shot at Robin with Tamaito, despite Luffy kicking him with Gomu Gomu no Hawk Whip. However, Doflamingo's bullet was deflected by Cavendish. Luffy then told him to take Law and the others out of the flower field. Cavendish initially refused, but Luffy told him that he entrusted their lives to him, making Cavendish think that Luffy was his fan. Luffy then resumed his battle against Doflamingo, and hit the Shichibukai with Busoshoku Haki imbued fists, sending him flying off the roof. However, Doflamingo laughed it off, saying that Luffy's attack were quick but lacked power. He then attacked Luffy with overheat, sending Luffy flying. Doflamingo mentioned to Luffy how he had followed the young pirate's career before kicking him into the palace wall, causing a large chunk of it to fall away. However, Luffy quickly got back up and continued fighting, attacking with a Gomu Gomu no Grizzly Magnum. Doflamingo easily avoided this attack and exploited the opening it left, kicking Luffy into the ground. Doflamingo then taunted Luffy about the shrinking birdcage and how it would kill all of his friends, all because the Straw Hats stepped foot on Dress Rosa. Luffy became enraged at Doflamingo for hurting his friends and prepared to activate Gear 4. Luffy activated Busoshoku Haki in his left arm and blew into it, inflating the muscles and exponentially increasing the arm's size. He continued blowing until Bound Man was activated. In this form, Luffy's entire torso became massive and he could only bounce, not stand. Doflamingo mocked his form, but Luffy revealed that he had subdued beasts with it. Luffy then sunk his arm into his body and hit Doflamingo with Gomu Gomu no Kongan, which sent Doflamingo flying far away into the streets. Luffy then sunk his legs into his body and flew towards Doflamingo. With precision, Luffy speedily maneuvered behind him and dropped the Shichibukai using Gomu Gomu no Rhino Schneider, sending Doflamingo crashing through several buildings. An enraged Doflamingo then flew up to the sky and Luffy rose to meet him, attacking Doflamingo with Gomu Gomu no Culverine Cannon. However, Doflamingo managed to avoid the attack and kicked Luffy with Athlete. However, Luffy's rubber managed to absorb the blunt attack despite being covered in Busoshoku Haki, and Luffy shook Doflamingo off. Luffy then used the Culverine Cannon again, but this time he changed its direction several times to follow Doflamingo, eventually succeeding in punching Doflamingo in the face. Luffy then flew towards him, knowing that Gear 4 was about to end. He attacked Doflamingo with both fists, but Doflamingo countered by summoning strings from the ground. Doflamingo revealed his Devil Fruit Awakening powers to Luffy, shocking the Straw Hat, who wondered if Doflamingo was even a Paramecia anymore. Twenty minutes later, Luffy continued battling against Doflamingo's strings as he listened to Riku's speech to the citizens of Dress Rosa. Doflamingo turned much of the town into string to attack Luffy, but Luffy evaded the string, pulling his head and arms into his body as he attacked Doflamingo with Gomu Gomu no Leo Bazooka, sending the Shichibukai crashing into the palace mountain. Luffy noticed that the birdcage remained active, meaning that Doflamingo was not utterly defeated. Luffy quickly flew to the palace mountain and attempted to finish Doflamingo off. 
However, before he could reach him, his Gear 4 wore off and he was completely exhausted. Gats arrived and helped Luffy up, but revealed that all the gladiators from the Colosseum were there to aid Luffy. Luffy asked Gats to give him 10 minutes to recover, and Gats proceeded to take Luffy to safety. They were then attacked by Burgess, but were saved when Sabo kicked Burgess away. With Sabo holding Burgess back, Luffy assured him that he will defeat Doflamingo once his hockey recharges. Sabo then entrusted Gats to Luffy's safety. As Gats ran away with Luffy, Law suddenly used Room to teleport to their location. With three minutes left for Luffy to recharge, Law took over protecting him. Luffy then lay on the ground near Law as his hockey regenerated. Eventually, Luffy's hockey fully recharged, and with the help of Law and his shambles, Luffy prevented Rebecca from being forced to cut down Viola, and confronted Doflamingo once more. Doflamingo attacked both Luffy and Rebecca with his strings, but Law saved Rebecca, so he turned his attention solely to Luffy. Doflamingo then turned an entire portion of the town into string to attack Luffy with a thousand flap thread string arrows. Doflamingo immobilized Luffy and taunted him by saying that all the slaughter could have been avoided had the people of Dress Rosa just accepted their manipulation. This enraged Luffy to the point where he instantly reactivated Gear 4 and broke the strings holding him, taking the remainder of the fight into the skies above. After once again saying Luffy stood no chance against him due to his commoner's blood, Doflamingo attempted to trap him in his spider's net. As Luffy enlarged his right arm and readied his final attack, Doflamingo unleashed 16 god threads in a last-ditch effort to kill Luffy. Despite this, Luffy's King Kong gun broke through and slammed him into the ground, destroying several buildings and shattering his trademark sunglasses. This time, Luffy's attack successfully defeated Doflamingo and the birdcage collapsed. While still in midair, Luffy deflated and started falling. Law saved him by instantly teleporting him to the ground. Having passed out from injury and exhaustion, Luffy's head was placed under Rebecca's lap as the latter began to cry in happiness. After Doflamingo's downfall, Luffy and his group went to the palace, but later went to Kuros' old house to rest and recover. Three days after Doflamingo's defeat, Luffy continued his recovery as he heard about the rumor about Rebecca's father. He was not pleased with this rumor even after Kuros explained that he started it. Bartolomeo then entered the house, revealing that the marines were mobilized to pursue the Straw Hats. He also explained that he and the other gladiators planned an escape route for them. Luffy then ran out of the house with the others, but suddenly stayed behind, saying that he still had something left to do. Zoro then told Luffy to hurry up with his business, and they'll be waiting for him at the eastern port. Luffy then dashed to the royal palace and called out Rebecca. Once Luffy found Rebecca, he asked her if she was okay with Kuros leaving her. Rebecca answered no, and Luffy offered to take her to him. Luffy then took Rebecca and made his way to the hill where Kuros' house is located. After dropping off Rebecca there, Luffy ran towards the eastern port. Luffy reached the eastern port just when Isho was about to attack his allies with all the rubble from Jess Rosa. Luffy then attacked the Admiral with a hockey-imbued Gear 3 attack, pushing him back. Luffy declared that he grew tired of running away from an Admiral and prepared for a fight. As they clashed, Luffy announced every single one of his attacks and where he was aiming before striking. Fujitora wondered if Luffy was taking pity on him due to his blindness. Luffy declared that he would not attack without saying anything given that his opponent is blind. Fujitora laughed, explaining that they were supposed to be sworn enemies and no one is supposed to fight an admiral like that. Annoyed and slightly angered, Fujitora blew Luffy with his gravity ability. Hadrudin caught Luffy and the Straw Hats, Law and Luffy's other allies quickly fled across a bridge, leading to a gigantic ship in the distance. As Fujitora prepared to bombard all the nearby ships with floating rubble, the citizens of Dress Rosa arrived to chase after the pirates. Not wanting to harm the citizens, Fujitora halted his attack, allowing his targets to get away. Luffy and his allies eventually reached Orlumbus's flagship, the Yanta Maria. After boarding the ship, the following pledged their allegiance to Luffy. Cavendish of the Beautiful Pirates, including Suleiman, Bartolomeo of the Barto Club, Sai of the Hapo Navy, Ideo of the XXX Gym Martial Arts Alliance, including Blue Gilly, Abdullah and Jeet, Leo of the Tantata Tribe, Hadrudin of the Giant Warrior Pirates, and Orlumbus of the Yanta Maria Grand Fleet. When Luffy was asked to drink a sake cup to complete the agreement for an alliance, Luffy declined, much to the other's shock. He did not wish to become someone great and powerful, but someone who is free, as well as not take away the freedom from his fellow allies. Once Luffy explained that they can do whatever they want, the allies decided to forge the alliance anyway, forming the Straw Hat fleet. To Luffy's surprise, Sai, Bartolomeo, Leo, Cavendish, Ideo, Orlumbus, and Hajrudin sat down and drank their sake cups, and Zoro ended up drinking the rest of the sake in what was supposed to be Luffy's. Afterwards, they held a feast to celebrate their victory over Doflamingo. As the group left Dress Rosa, a multitude of pirates who had suffered great blows to their business ventures because of Doflamingo's defeat came after the Yanta Maria Grand Fleet, seeking to bring down Luffy. However, Fujitora dropped the rubble from Dress Rosa on the enemy ships as a final thanks to Luffy for what he had done in their kingdom, while Kiros and Rebecca watched from afar and officially began their new lives as a family together. After the feast, each of the leading allies received Luffy's Beaver card and parted ways. 
Bartolomeo then brought the Straw Hats, the Samurai, and Law to his ship, the Going Luffy Senpai. After Zoro noticed the Straw Hats increase in bounty from a newspaper, Bartolomeo proudly showed Luffy's group their new wanted posters. Whole Cake Island Saga, Zo Arc. During a hailstorm, Luffy learned that the Barto Club does not have a navigator, lacks experience in sailing, and they usually called a granny who gives them useless advice. Therefore, Luffy, the other Straw Hats, the Samurai, and Law needed to protect the ship. After one week of traversing through the dangers of the New World, the ship finally arrived at Zo. Luffy was astonished to see that it's an island on the back of a giant elephant that's over 1,000 years old. After finding the Thousand Sunny, the Bardo Club bid Luffy's group farewell. Proceeding to search for Sanji's group, they climbed the elephant's left hind leg with a dragon that Conjuro conjured. After the samurai explained that they were also searching for their ninja comrade Raizo, Luffy and the others saw something dropping towards them. The thing that was falling towards them happened to be a monkey. The monkey hit Kenemon and Conjuro, causing them to fall off the dragon. Despite being separated from the group, the samurai assured the Straw Hats that they were alright and will catch up with them eventually. The rest of Luffy's group considered turning back for them, but after they saw the dragon struggling to climb, they decided to continue towards the top. Once they reached the top, the dragon turned back into a drawing, and the group went on to explore the island. They discovered a village, and Luffy ran ahead of the group, searching for Sanji, Nami, Brook, and Chopper. Luffy went to the whale forest and got attacked by a bull mink called Roddy for trespassing. They clashed until Wanda and Carrot arrived and stopped them. After Pedro called off the Guardians, Luffy got reacquainted with the Heart Pirates and explained that Law was on the island as well. Wanda then explained to Luffy about a recent attack on Zo before offering to take him to Sanji's group, much to his excitement. While riding Wani, Wanda told Luffy about the climate on Zo and how the seawater from Zunisha's eruption rain is filtered and sent across the country via a system of aqueducts. She and Carrot also explained that the rain also drops plenty of fish, providing them a good source of food. As they travel, they went past some wooden stockades used for torturing prisoners. Luffy asked her about the pirate she mentioned earlier and she told him about Jack, explaining that his obituary was in the paper, since he was believed to be killed during a raid on a marine escort. She added that his death wasn't confirmed so he might still be alive. Right after Law teleported the rest of Luffy's friends close to their location, Wanda led them into the Right Belly Forest. Luffy was overjoyed to be reunited with Nami and Chopper. Nami embraced Luffy as she told him what happened to Sanji. While having a feast with the Mink tribe, Luffy told Zoro not to be rude to the Minks. He was then happy to see Brooke again. Brooke explained that Momonosuke was safe but refused to leave his room. He also warned Luffy not to mention Samurai or the Wano country. Before he could explain the reason, he was interrupted by canine Minks. After Luffy told Chopper that Law was with his crew, Nami asked him what to do about Sanji. Since Sanji had left a letter, Luffy was not too worried, much to Nami's chagrin. Luffy then listened to Nami and Chopper's story about how they escaped the Big Mom pirates before listening to Wanda's story about how Nami's group saved the Mink tribe. After hearing that Prince Inuarashi awakened from his coma and wanted to meet Zo's benefactors, Luffy and his group went to meet him. On the way, Wanda began to explain to them about Jack's attack on Zo in more detail. During her explanation, Wanda revealed that Jack was searching for a Wano ninja known as Raizo. After Wanda finished with her recollection, Brooke then explained to the crew the reason why they should not mention Samurai or the Wano country. When Luffy blurted out the ninja's name, Nami, Usopp, and Brooke swiftly beat him up. They then arrived at the Duke's home, where they were introduced to Sicilian, who expressed his gratitude to the crew. After entering the Duke's home, they heard about a weapon Jack used against the Mink tribe. After hearing that the weapon was made by Caesar, Luffy became angry. Inuarashi then changed the topic of their conversation to how he once met Shanks. Luffy was about to talk more about him, but the Duke suddenly fell asleep since dusk arrived. After Wanda finished recalling the devastation caused by Jack and the Mink tribe's salvation, Luffy promised to make Jack and Kaido pay one day. Wanda expressed her doubt about Jack being dead, as she saw how powerful he was when he fought. The Straw Hats then decided to visit Nekomamushi and the Guardians, and they traveled to the Whale Forest with Wanda and Carrot. On the way, Nami and Brooke began to explain to the rest of the group what happened when Big Mom's ship arrived at Zo two days before Luffy's group's arrival. Specifically, they informed the rest of the crew of Big Mom's upcoming tea party, which would host a political wedding between Sanji, the third son of the Vinsmoke family, and the 35th daughter of the Charlotte family, Pudding. They also explained that Sanji, after ensuring the safety of Nami, Brooke, and Chopper, chose to leave with the Big Mom pirates in order to settle things with his family. After hearing about the circumstances surrounding Sanji's departure, Luffy was initially excited at the prospect of having another crewmate. However, when Brooke told him that they would become subordinate members of Big Mom's hierarchy if Sanji married her daughter, Luffy became displeased. Despite this, when Chopper explained the possibility of Sanji severing ties with them in order to avoid this exact scenario, Luffy became worried that Sanji might quit the Straw Hats, which he considered even worse than sailing under Big Mom. Luffy then decided to find Sanji, although his crew objected to confronting Big Mom without a plan. After arriving at the Whale Forest, Pedro then brought Luffy to Peckoms. 
When Luffy questioned him about the arranged marriage, Peccoms revealed that Sanji's father and Big Mom arranged the wedding to finalize an alliance between their families, and that the Vinsmoke family is a family of killers. Peccoms proceeded to tell them about a mysterious organization known as Germa 66, commanded by the Vinsmokes and headed ultimately by Sanji's father. Luffy then stated that he did not care and told Peccoms that he wanted the Big Mom pirates to be his underlings, not the other way around. Shocked and furious at this statement, Peccoms reminded Luffy of Big Mom's power and status. Once he calmed down, Peccoms explained the reason why Sanji could not refuse the invitation. If he did, he would receive the decapitated head of someone close to him. Luffy then asked him how the Big Mom pirates knew so much about Sanji, and Peccoms replied that it was because of the power that all four emperors hold. Peccoms went on to say that the marriage, instead of making the Straw Hats Big Mom's subordinates, would automatically result in Sanji leaving the Straw Hats and joining the Big Mom pirates, a revelation to which Luffy did not take kindly. Peccoms said that he'll return to the Big Mom pirates once he's recovered. Luffy then told Peccoms to also take him to the tea party to find Sanji, ignoring Peccoms' objections. As he ran outside, he found Zoro listening in on the earlier conversation. Luffy assumed that Zoro was also worried about Sanji, much to Zoro's annoyance. They then met Nekomamushi, who also gave them a warm greeting. Law arrived and introduced his crew to Luffy. Law was then shocked to be informed that Sanji went to Big Mom. Luffy said that he will bring Sanji back and told him not to attack Kaido until he returns. Law then explained that Kaido might be pursuing them as they speak and Zo could be at risk. After the minx felt touched by Law's concerns, Nekomamushi decided to party with Luffy and his group. The next morning, Luffy and his group heard a bell ringing and realized that Kinemon and Kanjuro had arrived. They quickly rushed to find them, fearing what would happen if the mink tribe met the samurai. The Straw Hats managed to intercept Kinemon, Kanjuro, and Momonosuke just as they arrived at Kurao City and tried desperately to keep them hidden. However, as Nekomamushi and Inuarashi were fighting, Kinemon and Kanjuro revealed themselves. Contrary to what the Straw Hats expected, the mink tribe welcomed the samurai and revealed that Raizo is safe. The Straw Hats were stunned to learn that the minks knew about Raizo all along and went to great lengths to keep him hidden despite the abuse they suffered. After Momonosuke stopped Inuarashi and Nekomamushi from continuing their quarrel, Kinemon revealed that Momonosuke was not his son, but actually the son of Kozuki Oden, which surprised Luffy as Momonosuke and Kinemon looked alike. However, Luffy still did not take Momonosuke seriously. Inuarashi and Nekomamashi then took the Straw Hats, Law, and the Samurai to Raizo, and Luffy and the other male pirates were excited to meet him, thinking he'd be like a stereotypical ninja. When they meet Raizo at a secret room inside the whale-shaped tree, Luffy and his crewmates were shocked by Raizo's appearance, but still begged him to perform various tricks. Raizo refused until the pirates started sulking, which caused him to use some of his ninja arts, and the pirates were immediately entranced. Luffy, Usopp, and Chopper then accompanied Kinemon, Kanjuro, and Raizo as they stood outside the whale tree, expressing their sorrows as they saw the state Zo was in after Jack's attack. When Robin deciphered the red poneglyph hidden within the whale tree, Nekomamashi called them back in. Inuarashi then explained to the Straw Hats about the four road poneglyphs, and they listened in anticipation as he revealed how they can lead to the Laugh Tale. When Nekomamashi revealed that Kaido and Big Mom each possessed one road poneglyph, Luffy became more eager to fight them. Usopp was delighted to hear that they can copy the information on the poneglyphs using Gyotaku, but Luffy was not interested in that approach, much to Usopp's chagrin. The Straw Hats were then surprised when Nekomamashi revealed that Momonosuke's ancestors created the poneglyphs. However, the samurai explained that Momonosuke never inherited the knowledge of the poneglyphs due to the execution of Lord Odin at the hands of Kaido and the Shogun of Wano. The Straw Hats also learned that Odin was part of Roger's crew, and had been on Laugh Tale with him, as well as the Beast Pirate's objective in obtaining the secret that Odin knew. The samurai explained Odin's will to open Wano country to the world, and they went on a journey to gather allies in order to fight Kaido and the Shogun of Wano. Kinemon then requests Luffy's assistance, but Luffy declined, saying that Momonosuke should make the request himself. Momonosuke then declared his will to fight Kaido and protect those dear to him. He bowed and humbly asked for Luffy's help. Seeing Momonosuke's resolve, Luffy accepted the quest and formed an alliance with the samurai and the mink tribe. Right after leaving the secret room, Luffy learned that Inuarashi and Nekomamashi traveled with Odin and had been on the ships of both Whitebeard and Roger. He also learned that the remnants of the Whitebeard pirates were defeated and then forced into hiding by the Blackbeard pirates one year after the Summit War of Marineford. The alliance decided to split up to accomplish different tasks and meet up again in Wano. Nami, Chopper, and Brooke chose to accompany Luffy in his mission to rescue Sanji. Robin asked Luffy to make a copy of the poneglyph in Big Mom's possession. However, before they could start their operation, they felt Zo shaking and heard Zunisha crying. As everything shook around them, Luffy heard Zunisha's voice. However, Luffy's own voice could not reach it. After Momonosuke revealed that he can hear the elephant's voice as well, Luffy urged him to give the elephant a command, which was to drive Jack away. After Jack's fleet had been sunk, Luffy prepared to disembark Zo. He then went to check up on Peccoms and was shocked to see that the house he was resting in collapsed. 
He was revealed when Pecoms revealed that he used his devil fruit powers to save himself from further injury. Luffy then carried Pecoms on his back and departed from Zo with the Sanji retrieval team, which also included Pedro. Everyone except the Straw Hat members left behind were shocked when Luffy jumped off Zunisha with his party. As they sailed towards Whole Cake Island on the Thousand Sunny, Luffy scolded Nami, Chopper, and Brooke for acting less energetic. Nami pointed out that they were still recovering from the shock of Luffy's stunt at Zo. The group on the Sunny were then surprised to see Carrot had snuck aboard the ship. After she begged them not to turn back, Luffy allowed her to come along. When the crew got hungry, Luffy, in Sanji's absence, insisted on preparing a meal himself after Nami was going to charge them money for the food. While cooking, Luffy and the rest of the Sanji retrieval team learned from a newspaper about the Blackbeard Pirates' attack on the Revolutionary Army's headquarters on Baltigo. Luffy was shocked to see what his father looks like and also worried for Sabo's life. Pedro assured Luffy that if the revolutionaries were defeated, it would have been mentioned in the newspaper. Luffy then realized that he forgot to turn off the stove, causing a fire. After passing through a storm, Luffy presented his dish, which the group did not enjoy in the least. Luffy then admitted that he'd used up all the food they had, and his group found themselves in a food shortage crisis. Whole Cake Island Arc a few days later, the group was famished from the lack of food and overheated as they passed through boiling waters. They were saved from starvation when Luffy managed to catch a gigantic fish. Luffy immediately started eating the fish and consumed the fish's toxic skin, which led to Luffy being incapacitated by food poisoning. After they entered Big Mom's waters, the group on the Sunny was approached by a ship belonging to Germa 66. The Straw Hats were approached by two of Sanji's siblings, Vinsmog Yanji and Vinsmog Raiju. Raiju proceeded to suck the poison out of Luffy through his mouth, causing him to be revived almost instantly. Luffy thanked Raiju for saving him, as Raiju explained that the Vinsmoke family had been searching for Sanji ever since he left them as a child. Luffy wanted Raiju to give Sanji back to the crew, but Raiju leapt back onto her ship and she and Yanji sailed away. The group later docked at Kakao Island, an island next to Whole Cake Island. After seeing buildings made of chocolate, Luffy and Chopper went ahead to explore the island. When they ate a cafe, a policeman confronted them and was about to arrest them. The owner of the cafe, Charlotte Pudding, arrived and came to their defense, saying that they were hired to dismantle it. After she saved Luffy and Chopper, the team accompanied her to her home where she offered them food. While conversing with her, Luffy accidentally revealed his name. The Sanji retrieval team was in shock to learn that the woman they were conversing with was Sanji's betrothed, who in turn was surprised to discover that the group was from the Straw Hat crew. After calming down, Luffy and the team listened to Pudding as she explained more about the Charlotte family and her thoughts on Sanji. Luffy and the others were shocked to hear that Sanji turned her down. Pudding then showed them a secret route to Whole Cake Island and told them to meet her when promising to bring Sanji to them. The Sanji retrieval team then left in a hurry when guards arrived for Pudding and quickly returned to the Thousand Sunny. Pecoms was nowhere to be seen and they found a message telling them to turn back. Luffy decided to continue forward, saying that things got interesting. After leaving Kakao Island, Luffy wanted to rescue Pecoms, but Pedro dissuaded him thinking that the mink would be alright. The team sailed on Pudding's route and reached the next island, but Nami decided to stay away from it. Luffy quickly steered the ship's starboard, causing the helm to burst into flames, much to Nami's chagrin. Luffy later wanted to go to the kitchen to cook again, but Nami quickly stopped him. A giant aquatic centipede then attacked the Thousand Sunny, and the team began battling it. The team later battled a swarm of giant ants before getting trapped in a frozen sea of syrup as night fell. As they worked to unfreeze the sea, Pedro revealed that the giant ants had once eaten his own ship, and Luffy wondered what he did there in the past. Pedro then explained that he once traveled with Pecoms as a pirate and came to Toto Land searching for the Poneglyphs, revealing that his journey was met with defeat. However, Pedro was fine with coming back to help the Straw Hats. He told Luffy that since Inuarashi and Nekomamashi showed him the road Poneglyph on Zo, they must believe he can follow in Goldie Rogers' footsteps, as he was the only other stranger to see it, and so they needed to acquire Big Mom's road Poneglyph. He then offered to sneak in and steal it while the others rescue Sanji. Luffy agreed to this proposal as the ants returned. The next day, the team reached Whole Cake Island. After docking at the southwestern coast of Whole Cake Island, the team split into two groups, with Pedro and Brooke departing to find Big Mom's road poneglyph. Right after Luffy's group disembarked on the island, Luffy saw what appeared to be Sanji in the nearby forest. Luffy, Chopper, and Carrot ran after him with Nami following them, but he somehow disappeared. Luffy, Chopper, and Carrot entered the woods to continue searching, although they were often distracted by the sweet environment. The team was nearly eaten by a talking crocodile, and Nami attempted to get everyone to turn back, but Luffy intently pressed on the search for Sanji. They also discovered a man with a gigantic head whose body is buried in the ground. Suddenly, Luffy encountered Big Mom's eighth daughter, Brulee, who was disguised as another version of himself and talked and acted simultaneously with him just like a mirror reflection. The two got angry at each other and started fighting, matching each other's blows exactly, and they told the others to go ahead and look for Sanji. Nami, Chopper, and Carrot returned to where Luffy was still fighting Brule as they were being chased by Randolph. Brule went with them while Luffy ran in the opposite direction. Luffy attempted to tell them the real him was not with them, but Brule stifled him before he could say anything. 
As night fell over Whole Cake Island, Luffy gathered multiple bound fake versions of Sanji, putting Nami, Chopper, and Carrot into the center of a clearing in the seducing woods. Luffy exclaimed that he found all of them and they were all acting strangely. He then asked whose idea it was to begin multiplying. Luffy then discovered the real Nami among the fakes and quickly untied her. Luffy realized they did not multiply on purpose as she berated his logic and explained to Luffy about what happened during the encounter with Brulee. While interrogating a buried man named Pound, they learned about a toll that the citizens of Tato Land must pay to Big Mom as well as the Emperor's Devil Fruit power, which allows her to give life to many things. The man then revealed that he was one of Big Mom's husbands, who was discarded after having two daughters. Big Mom's 10th son, Charlotte Cracker, appeared in front of the group. As Luffy and Nami confronted Cracker, they were suddenly ambushed by Randolph again, but Cracker knocked him over in anger. Luffy and Nami watched as Cracker argued with Brulee and the guards of the seducing woods. Brulee showed a captured carrot and chopper trapped in her mirror before shattering the mirror into pieces. Luffy was worried, but Chopper revealed that he and Carrot remained unharmed. When Cracker tried to kill Pound, Luffy blocked his sword. He then kicked Cracker's arm, forcing him to free Pound. Luffy battled Cracker, but he was sent flying into a tree homie, and he got up and prepared to give his all against Cracker. Nami asked Luffy to retreat, but he refused and tried to attack Cracker with Elephant Gun. After blocking the attack, Cracker easily overwhelmed Luffy with his swordsmanship, Devil Fruit abilities, and Busoshoku Haki, sending Luffy flying through several tree homies despite Luffy using Haki himself. Luffy returned and attacked Cracker with Hawk Gatling, but Cracker counted it with his hockey imbued shields, which Luffy stated were harder than any Busoshoku Haki he had faced before. Cracker slammed Luffy into the ground and drew closer to him, berating Luffy for wanting to take Sanji away from a royal lifestyle. Luffy grew angry at Cracker for claiming that Sanji would tell him and the other Straw Hats that he never wanted to see them again. Luffy then activated Gear 4 and managed to send Cracker flying with Kong Gun. While Cracker was on the ground, Luffy used another Kong Gun and shattered Cracker's biscuit armor. The real Cracker emerged from it, cutting Luffy's right arm with pretzel. Cracker revealed his Devil Fruit abilities to Luffy as he created multiple Biscuit soldiers, which Luffy attacked. However, Cracker had them advance as he leapt out from behind them to attack, barely missing Luffy's head. The battle lasted for 11 hours, and Luffy adopted a strategy of fighting, running, and eating Cracker's Biscuit soldiers. This made Cracker increasingly exasperated, and Luffy was determined to chip away Cracker's stamina and go to Sanji. Cracker soon produced more Biscuit soldiers and sent them charging at Luffy. Nami used Rain Spark and softened the soldiers, which Luffy then devoured. As Luffy was reaching his limit, he used another variation form of Gear 4 called Tank Man, full version. When Cracker tried to pierce Luffy with his sword, Luffy sucked Cracker into his body and sent him flying into Sweet City. After Cracker's defeat, Luffy lay on the ground, exhausted from the battle. He then rested on top of King Bomb's head alongside Nami as they traveled to Big Mom's castle. On the way, Luffy returned to his normal size and they encountered the Vinsmoke carriage and saw Sanji again. Excited, Luffy leapt onto the carriage and asked Sanji to return with him. In response, Sanji kicked Luffy off the carriage and told him to leave. Luffy refused to listen, so Sanji volunteered to handle him himself. As Sanji approached Luffy, he further insulted the latter before kicking him in the face. Luffy withstood the attack and remained on his feet. Sanji continued the confrontation by repeatedly kicking Luffy until he finally collapsed and lost a tooth. After Sanji returned to his family's carriage, Luffy got back on his feet and yelled to Sanji, saying he knew that Sanji never meant what he said. Luffy declared that he would wait for Sanji and would gladly starve to death if he does not return. Luffy went on to say that he would not eat any food unless it's made by Sanji's hands. After the Vinsmoke family left, Luffy and Nami soon saw the weather changing into a massive storm as an army marched towards their location. Luffy refused to hide, so he fought the army head on. As the battle raged on, Luffy managed to defeat most of the army before he was overwhelmed by Charlotte Opera's cream, which scalded his skin as he raced to attack Opera. However, Charlotte Mondor put Luffy into the setting of one of his books, preventing Luffy from seeing the real world. This prevented Luffy from seeing two Big Mom Pirates members, Charlotte Counter and Charlotte Cadenza, from rushing at him, and he was punched in the front and the back with Cream Punch, sending him crashing down. The Big Mom Pirates headed back to Sweet City, and one of them tried to carry Luffy. Luffy tried holding onto the ground in order to stay at his spot, but Counter stomped on his head. Luffy and Nami were then imprisoned inside of a book. Inside the prisoner library, Big Mom spoke to them through a Den Den Mushi. Luffy shouted at her to let him go. Big Mom laughed at his liveliness and said that she thought he had broken his promise to battle her due to not bringing his entire crew. Luffy replied that he still intended to fulfill that promise, but he was only there to get Sanji back, though he would still fight her if she showed up. Big Mom replied by telling Luffy that he was nothing compared to her, and that she could have him killed without even needing to show up. Big Mom said that if they gave up on rescuing Sanji, she would free them once the wedding was complete, and warned them that if they interfered with her plans, she would give them hell. Big Mom recalled the time that Luffy gave her treasure, including the legendary box known as the Tamatebako, and explained that she had taken a liking to the box and she would forgive the Fishman Island incident altogether, and planned to open the Tamatebako during the wedding ceremony. Luffy shouted at her to be quiet, saying the wedding would not happen and asked to speak to his friend Pudding. 
Big Mom laughed incredulously about these straw hats being friends with the bride-to-be and then inquired about Lola. Big Mom recounted on how Lola running away from an important political marriage ruined her plans to become Pirate King. Luffy replied that Lola did not need to be a pawn in Big Mom's rise to power and challenged the Emperor again, saying he would get Sanji back and defeat her in the end. Sometime after the conversation, Pudding came to the prisoner library and requested to talk to Luffy and Nami, and she entered their cell via an opening created by a bookmark. Pudding apologized for the harm her siblings had inflicted upon them and apologized for not meeting them on the coast like they agreed. She revealed that Sanji had proposed to her, but stated that she knew he did not want to truly marry her, and so she would not marry him. She then whispered to Luffy and Nami, saying with a sinister expression that she would kill Sanji during the wedding ceremony and that Luffy and Nami would not leave alive. Pudding then left their cell with tears while telling them goodbye and insulting them. Shocked and angry about what Pudding said, Luffy then struggled to break free, determined not to die even if it meant tearing off his arms. Before Luffy could further injure himself, Jinbei arrived at the prisoner library and took down Opera with a single punch. Luffy and Nami were overjoyed as Jinbei prepared to free them. Jinbei then released Luffy and Nami by burning the book they were imprisoned in. Luffy then collapsed from hunger but quickly got back up as Big Mom's soldiers were charging into the prisoner library. Luffy dashed out of the library and went on a rampage throughout the castle, searching for Sanji. During the rampage, Luffy strangled Counter while demanding Sanji's whereabouts. Luffy continued to run through the hallways, calling for Sanji, until Raju grabbed him and hit him in the infirmary. She informed him that Sanji was already aware of Pudding's deception. She also mentioned that she tried to convince Sanji to leave, but he was worried about the chefs at the Barity and the Straw Hats. Relieved that Sanji was not being deceived, Luffy jumped out of the castle and headed back to the place where he promised to wait for Sanji. Dazed and fatigued, Luffy began his journey through Sweet City in the rain. He later made it back to the promised place, where he fell asleep while waiting patiently for Sanji. Luffy woke up when he smelled the bento box Sanji was carrying. Sanji gave the box to him and Luffy happily ate the food. When Luffy once again asked Sanji to leave with him, Sanji explained his reasons why he could not. Luffy responded by punching Sanji and demanding that he tell the truth. Sanji broke down into tears, saying he wanted to return to the crew but did not want to leave his family to die. Luffy then gave Sanji his support, saying that they would ruin the wedding together. Luffy and Sanji were later contacted by Chopper's group through a mirror shard. After Luffy explained his intent to ruin the wedding ceremony, Jinbei explained to Luffy more about Bege, such as his backstory and him plotting against Big Mom. Jinbei proposed to Luffy about forming an alliance with Bege, and Luffy agreed to meet with him. Once at Bege's hideout, Luffy and Sanji were greeted by Vito, who asked them to take a bath, since his boss does not like to meet with dirty people. After Luffy and Brooke had their bath, they raided Bege's fridge for milk, with Luffy regaining his lost tooth and Brooke's cracked skull healing. Luffy and his team soon met Bege, and the negotiations were hectic, with Luffy spotting Caesar Clown among Bege's crew, and wanting to attack Bege for hurting Pecoms. The brawl was broken up when Jinbei pointed out that the group shared a common enemy in Big Mom. Reluctantly, Luffy asked Bege about his plan, and the latter responded that he already had the perfect one prepared. Bege proceeded to explain the details, including informing Luffy that he would be the bait to distract Big Mom's subordinates once Bege triggers one of her tantrums. Despite Nami and Chiffon's protests, Luffy agreed excitedly, stating that he already had a plan for how to make his entrance at the ceremony. Luffy, Bege, and Caesar then agreed that their alliance would come to an end once Big Mom was dead and all groups had made their escape. As the meeting adjourned, Luffy asked Bege for a favor. Luffy requested Bege to place a mirror inside the wedding cake so he could enter the venue from there, taking everyone by surprise. Planning to take advantage of Brulee's power, Luffy rounded up a bunch of animals from the seducing woods and had her turn them into Luffy duplicates. Bege took the Alliance members to the tea party in his castle and Luffy slept for the first time in three days. After the wedding ceremony began, Jinbei had difficulty waking Luffy up but eventually managed to do so with food. The team then prepared to charge into the venue once they heard the signal. Right after Katakuri's attempted assassination on Sanji failed, multiple duplicates of Luffy emerged from the wedding cake. As chaos erupted at the wedding venue, Luffy identified himself when Big Mom called out to him. Luffy attempted to attack the photo of Carmel, but his attack was thwarted by Katakuri, who immobilized Luffy with his devil fruit powers. Jinbei came to Luffy's aid and freed him using black tea. When Jinbei officially declared to Big Mom that he was leaving the Big Mom pirates and joining the Straw Hats, Luffy was worried that Big Mom would take away Jinbei's lifespan. However, Luffy was delighted to see that Big Mom's power had no effect on him due to having no fear towards Big Mom, and cheered when he toasted a cup of sake to signify his departure from her. Big Mom then tried to attack Luffy and Jinbei with Prometheus, but the two evaded the attack. Luffy was then overjoyed to see Brooke destroying the picture of Carmel. However, Big Mom did not start screaming after three seconds like they planned. During the ensuing conflict, Bege pretended to pin Luffy down to avoid suspicion. When Brooke was decapitated, his head rolled towards them, but he still survived. Brooke then whispered to Luffy that Big Mom was in a state of confusion on what to be mad about, and their best chance was to show her the broken picture of Carmel again. 
Bege questioned if there's any point with the plan, but when they were approached by Katakuri, Bege noticed that he foresaw a horrific future and became confident again that the plan will work out. While Bege confronted Katakuri, Luffy grabbed Carmel's broken portrait, preparing to show it to Big Mom. Katakuri then went after Luffy and pinned him down with his devil fruit powers. However, Luffy was still able to stretch his arms and showed Carmel's broken portrait to Big Mom, causing her to start her strange scream. Luffy then shielded his ears from Big Mom's voice. After putting on earplugs, Luffy watched as Bege, Vito, and Gotti fired their KX launches at Big Mom. However, Big Mom's scream detonated the rockets before they could reach her, shocking Luffy and his allies. With the assassination attempt a failure, Caesar flew into the venue with the escape mirror and Bege signaled to Luffy to retreat. Before they could escape into the mirror, Big Mom's scream shattered it, leaving them trapped in the venue. Luffy then watched in amazement as Bege transformed into a giant fortress. Luffy then marveled at the fortress as he and his group fled into it. After all the Alliance members and the Vinsmoke family successfully retreated inside, Bege went on to explain to his allies about the dire situation they were in. Luffy then showed concern when Bege bled as his fortress sustained damage from Big Mom's attack. He tried rushing out to attack Big Mom, but was held back by his crew. They were intent on not fighting Big Mom, and Bege hatched an escape plan. The Vinsmoke family went out to cover for the Alliance, but when Raiju was overwhelmed, Luffy and Sanji went back and blocked Big Mom's attack, with Luffy doing so against Sanji's orders. As Sanji dragged Luffy away, Big Mom taunted Luffy by using his previous threats to her before calling him spineless. In response, Luffy activated Gear 4 and tried to strike Big Mom, who easily blocked his attack. Before falling back, Luffy told Big Mom that he would be coming after her after Kaido is defeated. Before they could escape, Luffy, Sanji, and the Vinsmoke family were subdued by the Charlotte family. Big Mom was going to execute them, but the Tamatabako dropped into the base of the Whole Cake Chateau and exploded, causing the castle to topple over. As the castle collapsed, Luffy's group, Bege's crew, and the Vinsmoke family got away. The Sanji retrieval team and the fire tank pirates rendezvoused at the northwest part of Whole Cake Island, where Luffy and Bege agreed to go their separate ways. After Brooke and Chopper separated from the group to retrieve the shark submerge, the rest head for Thousand Sunny. As they approached the seducing woods, Luffy was surprised to see King Bomb alive and stitched back together. Nami then revealed that she still possessed part of Big Mom's Vivre card and used it to control King Bomb again, forcing him to transport the fleeing team. However, before they reached the seducing woods, a crazed Big Mom riding on Zeus caught up to them. Using Napoleon in its sword form, Big Mom unleashed an air slash that cut a part of King Bomb. Luffy noticed that the attack was similar to Dory and Bragi's combination attack. As Big Mom prepared to attack again, Luffy prepared to fight, but Nami interrupted him and diverted Zeus's attention by using thunderclouds, causing the cloud homie to veer off course and drop Big Mom. When Luffy and his group reached the seducing woods, Big Mom ordered the tree homies to stop the straw hats, but King Bomb charged through them. Luffy and his group were later forced to jump off King Bomb when Prometheus attacked and burned King Bomb for his betrayal. As the Sanji retrieval team continued their escape, Jinbei explained about Big Mom's eating disorder to Luffy as she resumed her pursuit. Prometheus caught up to them and Luffy attacked the fire homie to avenge King Bomb but was unable to harm the living flames with hockey punches. After Jinbei stunned Prometheus with blasts of water, several Big Mom pirates caught up to their captain and clashed with the Sanji retrieval team. Along the way, Luffy stopped Carrot from separating from the group. The team pulled out of the conflict quickly, knowing they could not split up there. When Zeus ate one of Nami's weather eggs and grew massively and became stormy, Nami took the opportunity to summon a massive lightning bolt that struck the Big Mom pirates pursuing them. Nami's attack left Big Mom laying at the bottom of a crater. To the Straw Hat's shock, Big Mom was barely affected and continued to move. She ate through the ground as she moved back up, but the team started running again. They were then approached by Pudding and Chiffon. Luffy was angry to see Pudding again as she tried to tell Sanji about their mission to make a cake. To Luffy's confusion, her mood swings as she went from being in love with Sanji to wanting to kill him and back. Chiffon took the lead as she petitioned for Sanji to help them make a cake to satiate Big Mom's eating disorder, and Sanji readily agreed to assist them. Big Mom then got back on her feet and unleashed another devastating air slash, and the two groups parted ways with Sanji heading to Kakao Island with Pudding and Chiffon, while Luffy and his group continued fleeing to the Thousand Sunny. Pudding used her devil fruit powers to send memories flooding into the souls of the homies, allowing the Straw Hats to make it to the coast without trouble. The Sanji retrieval team made it back to the ship, but they got into a conflict with Pero Sparrow and Katakuri who were on board. Luffy was also surprised to find Chopper and Brooke trapped in candy. Pero Sparrow sent a spiked candy Iron Maiden at the Straw Hats, but Luffy destroyed it with a Red Hawk. Upon reaching the ship, Luffy clashed against Katakuri. After Perospero trapped the ship in candy, Luffy watched in shock as Pedro attempted to take out Perospero with a massive suicidal explosion. As the team completed preparations for their getaway, Katakuri once again made his move and subdued Carrot when she tried to attack him. Luffy then grabbed Katakuri and dragged him into the mirror world. Once there, Luffy smashed the mirror to the Sunny and prepared to continue his fight with the sweet commander. With the Sunny fleeing from Big Mom and her fleet, Luffy and Katakuri commenced their fight, with Katakuri claiming that he outmatched Luffy in both speed and power. 
After Luffy attacked with Hot Gatling, Katakuri countered with several mochi tendrils hardened into fists, before proceeding to warn Luffy that anything Luffy can do, he can do better. Luffy then asserted that Rubber would never lose to Mochi, but his subsequent hawk stamp was dodged and Katakuri kicked him into a wall. Luffy then tried using Elephant Gun, but Katakuri created an even larger fist with Mochi and pushed Luffy into the wall with tremendous power, overwhelming him. With Luffy lying on the floor, Katakuri then ordered Brulee to find another mirror on the Sunny and use the portal to set the Sunny on fire. After Joscarpone and Mascarpone arrived with a mirror, Luffy rushed towards them, but Katakuri stopped them and reminded him of his promise to fight one-on-one. -on -one. Katakuri then resumed attacking Luffy, warning him not to lay a hand on his younger sisters and brothers. Luffy successfully dodged the attacks and made contact with Nami through a mirror shard, ordering her to break all the mirrors on the Sunny so that he can focus solely on fighting Katakuri. Luffy showed concern for his group when he heard that Big Mom sunk the Thousand Sunny. While the Big Mom pirates were puzzled by the mirrors leading to the Sunny breaking one by one, Luffy was contacted by his team after they survived Big Mom's assault. As Luffy distanced himself from the nearby Big Mom pirates, his group told him to find a mirror connecting to Kakao Island so they could meet him there. Luffy was then further assaulted by Katakuri, and Luffy covered his mouth to prevent his team from knowing that he was sustaining injuries. In a brief moment, Luffy told his team to hurry on to Kakao Island. As Katakuri prepared to kill him, Luffy declared that he did not plan on dying. As Luffy continued to struggle against Katakuri, Brulee started bragging about Katakuri's legendary strength. Luffy then tried to punch her, but Katakuri grabbed his fist and slammed him into a wall. After pondering on how he should maim Luffy, Katakuri then began to attack with his trident Mogura. In the midst of this, Katakuri noted how Luffy dodged his strikes more so than anyone, and revealed his awakened powers to trap the Straw Hat Captain. As Luffy was restrained, he prepared to resort to using Gear 4. Before Luffy could activate his Gear 4, Katakuri prevented him from activating it by engulfing him with Mochi. Growing tired of their battle making his snack time late, Katakuri turned much of the surrounding mirror world into mochi and piled it onto Luffy in order to suffocate him. While Katakuri was feasting on some snacks, Luffy escaped by eating through the mochi and located Katakuri inside a nearby mochi house, using his Kenbun Shoku Haki. He then broke into the house and saw Katakuri in the state of eating. This made Katakuri furious and he quickly dispatched his chefs before attacking Luffy, overwhelming him with a strong Busoshoku Haki. However, Luffy managed to land a kick on Katakuri's jaw and Katakuri was incredulous when Luffy stated he had figured out his weakness. Luffy then activated Gear 4 and struck Katakuri with Kong Gun, which Katakuri blocked. Luffy gained the upper hand against Katakuri, landing several Gear 4 attacks on him. However, once Katakuri regained his composure, he resumed dodging Luffy's attacks and landed a powerful strike on Luffy, knocking him back. With Luffy losing the advantage, Katakuri went on the offensive. When Katakuri mentioned that Luffy would deflate, Luffy realized that his Gear 4 would wear out soon and retreated. His Gear 4 wore out as he was fleeing with Katakuri chasing after him. Once he came across Brulee, he grabbed her and escaped the mirror world before Katakuri could catch him. Luffy and Brulee then arrived at Nuts Island and found Big Mom rampaging there. After he was spotted by Big Mom, Luffy ran away while still carrying Brulee. Perospero blocked Luffy's path with a candy wall and Luffy tried to destroy it with Gigant Pistol which had no effect. He then dodged an attack from Amand and jumped over the candy wall and continued running with Big Mom pursuing him. Luffy then escaped from Big Mom and traveled from island to island through the mirror world. While hiding inside of a building with the captured Brulee, Luffy wondered how to defeat Katakuri. He then remembered about Rayleigh's lessons and expressed an interest in seeing into the future before declaring that he would surpass Katakuri. Eventually, Luffy confronted Katakuri, clashing with him again. Though Katakuri pummeled him many times, Luffy kept getting back up. Luffy then calmed his mind and remembered what Rayleigh told him. He began to see into the future when he attempted to counter against a giant mochi fist. Katakuri tried to deter Luffy from continuing the battle, but Luffy refused to give up, saying that his friends believed in him. Knowing that Luffy's Kenbon Shoku Haki was improving dramatically, Katakuri tried to end the battle quickly. Just as Luffy was about to attempt to dodge his opponent's next attack, a projectile pierced his thigh, breaking his balance, allowing Katakuri the opportunity to deal a devastating blow to him. Luffy briefly cried out in pain before Katakuri kicked him into a wall. He then tried to strike Luffy against his mochi spear, but Luffy dodged it. Finally, Katakuri unleashed a barrage of mochi fists, pummeling Luffy to the floor. While lying down, Luffy thought back to his training with Rayleigh and got back on his feet. Flampe tried to shoot Luffy with a silent blowgun, but he dodged the shot. After Katakuri injured himself and revealed his face to Flampe while berating her for interference, both Luffy and Katakuri unleashed a blast of Haushoku Haki, knocking out Flampe and her subordinates. With no one meddling in the fight, Luffy resumed his battle with Katakuri. They continued to trade blows with each other as they were each getting worn out from the battle. Luffy activated another variation of Gear 4, Snake Man. With his increased speed and ability to home in on its target, Luffy was able to land more hits on Katakuri. However, Katakuri countered with his spiked mochi attacks. After trading more blows with each other, both fighters claimed that they would end the battle before engaging in a massive clash. After the clash, Luffy's Gear 4 wore off and he fell into a hole created by the impact. 
As Luffy later climbed out of the hole, Katakuri stood and asked Luffy if he would return to defeat Big Mom. Luffy replied that he would, and Katakuri collapsed and fell unconscious. With Katakuri defeated, Luffy covered his fanged mouth with his extra hat before walking away. Pecoms, while in disguise, then approached him with the captured brulee and told Luffy that he planned to help him escape to honor Pedro's sacrifice. While traveling to the mirror leading to Cacao Island, Pecoms explained to Luffy about the Sulong form and his plan to help Luffy escape. While exiting the mirror world, Pecoms sandwiched Luffy between himself and Brulee to hide the straw hat. Pecoms transformed, but he was viciously attacked, causing Luffy to be exposed. Sanji then grabbed Luffy and attempted to escape through the air, but they were smashed into the ground by Charlotte Yuen. Luffy and Sanji were cornered, but they were saved by the arrival of Jerma 66. As Sanji's siblings shielded them from bullets, Sanji was told to escape with Luffy, who lost consciousness. After Sanji kicked through several of the Big Mom pirates, Brulee revealed to them Katakuri's defeat at Luffy's hands, causing them to become furious. In response, an enraged Oven attempted to attack Sanji and Luffy, but Ichiji repelled Oven as Sanji and Luffy fled into the air. Yuen tried to attack Sanji once more, but Yanji interfered. Sanji was then shot at by several snipers and one of them fired a missile. Niji grabbed Sanji before he was caught in the explosion, and while holding onto Sanji and Luffy, Niji traveled at a high speed and took down several pirates with his sword. Niji then threw Sanji and Luffy towards the Thousand Sunny, sending them flying over the Big Mom pirate's fleet. As the group on the Sunny sailed past the port, Sanji told his captain that their ship was within sight. Luffy and Sanji returned to the Sunny, and Chopper quickly tended to Luffy's injuries. The group was then besieged by Smoothie's fleet, but Judge came to their rescue. As the Sunny passed by Judge's castle, Judge asked Luffy why he risked his life to rescue Sanji. Instead of answering his question, Luffy thanked him. The Sunny group later saw the enemy ships approaching them from the front, and when the situation grew more dire, they were surprised when Watatsumi appeared and attacked the enemy. The Sun Pirates cleared a path for the Sunny. Luffy thanked them, and Aladdin asked Luffy to take care of Jinbei. However, despite their efforts, the Sunny was intercepted and attacked by the Queen Mama Chanter. Watatsumi saved the Sunny by switching it with the Sun Pirate ship and hid the Sunny in his mouth. Watatsumi tried swimming away, but Oven attacked him with heat waves, forcing him to spit out the Sunny. As the Sun Pirates held back the Big Mom Pirates, Jinbei decided to stay back to help them. Luffy consented to Jinbei's decision, but reminded him that as an official member of the Straw Hats, Jinbei must survive and meet up with the rest of the crew at Wano. After Jinbei joined his former crew in battle, the Sunny group sailed far away from Kakao Island. With the Big Mom Pirates unable to pursue, the Sunny group successfully escaped Tato Land. After some rest, Sanji cooked a meal for them. Levely Arc after Sanji realized that he received a raid suit from Niji during the escape from Kakao Island, Luffy and Chopper begged him not to throw it away. Carrot received a newspaper and the group read it. Luffy became depressed when he misread his new bounty as 150 million. Brooke later took a closer look at the poster and told Luffy that he misread the amount. The group was then shocked to hear that Luffy's bounty actually increased to 1.5 billion. To be continued. Did you enjoy our video? Well then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi. And make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.